Before we get into this unbelievable episode of the Empty Netters podcast, we are going to hear from our presenting sponsor, Echo Tequila. Not only is Echo Tequila my favorite canned cocktail in the world right now, they're also my favorite people in the world. We just spent the weekend in Nashville. We did a bunch of awesome things, which we'll get into, which is why this episode is so special. But we hung out with the Echo team. We drank about a thousand of these things. That, that might be low. It honestly might be on the low end. And it's just, it's great when you find a new drink that's clearly made with the best ingredients and all of the best stuff because you don't feel hungover the next day. I had so many of these things. They're unbelievable. They're made with blue agave tequila right down in Mexico, gluten-free, zero carbs, no added sweeteners. It's unbelievable. Check, check, check. Delicious, check. Gets my buzz on, check. Dan, I actually ripped up my Christmas list. I had a bunch <laughs> of things I was wishing for. Now it's just all Echo tequila soda. That's and my entire list. I, I don't blame you. And it was amazing sitting at the Preds game and cracking a bunch of these and enjoying it. I, I've never been more certain that Echo tequila soda is an every case scenario drink. I drink it post game after a nice men's league game i'll drink it at the game watching my favorite teams play i'll drink it at the house when i'm ready to go out i'll drink it at the bar it is the best it doesn't taste chalky and gross like so many of those other canned tequilas so many of those other canned cocktails it is just high quality ingredients that leads to a high quality beverage and it's for everyone if you think you want it you're right you do if you think you don't want it you're wrong you yeah, do want it i agree i've got news for those people out there who aren't sure about tequila have an extra tequila soda, you will be sure from now on. It is going to deliver every single night, night in, night out, on the ice, off the ice. Echo tequila, tequila soda is what you need. So to get it, go to sipecho.com, S-I-P-H-E-C-H-O.com. Figure out where the closest store is to you using their store locator. You'll be able to drive right down, grab that stuff, toss them some, some ice, have it in your house. Or if you want to really stock up, because you never know how much is going to be in the store because people are buying this stuff up. You're going to put in that promo code NETTERS at checkout and save 15%. That's N-E-T-T-E-R-S, NETTERS at checkout. Have that stuff delivered right to your door and you will never be without it. So let's get into this podcast because it's going to blow your hair back. Guys, welcome back to the Empty Netters podcast. And I can say with complete certainty this is going to be the best episode of this show you will ever hear. Big, big episode. Big, massive, gargantuan episode. It's a, I would say it's a top five pick episode. Oh, easily, dude. Easily. So, guys, today on the episode, we are joined by Matt Duchesne, star for the Nashville Predators, third overall pick, two-time NHL All-Star, three-time 60-plus point scorer in the NHL. You'll hear that all when we introduce yeah, him. Yeah. But we're buzzing. We went down to Nashville this past weekend, hung out with Dutchie the whole time. He is a absolute stud, had a huge game, having a huge year, and he was just unreal on the show. Oh, he's a beauty, man. Class act on and off the ice. Yeah. First guest, couldn't have picked a better one. It's just truly remarkable. The guy just hung out the whole time, couldn't have been funnier, he couldn't have been cooler, just just ha can't say enough good things about him. So let's get into some quick stuff before we get into this Dutchie interview, because we got to you know, gotta give the people what they want. We got to talk about yeah. the happenings in the NHL, what's going on, do you have any hot ice? Because I've got one thing that I want to talk yeah, about. I think it's, what I really love about this hot ice is it's hot goss, too. Yeah, you don't really hot get goss. hot goss in the NHL, and we've got some hot goss today. Let's get into the major hot ice, and then we can move on. Uh, we've got a little bit of he said, he said yeah, situations classic. going on here. So recently in an interview, Zdeno Chara mentioned Big Z. talking about the 2011 Bruins Stanley Cup said that they got some extra motivation because was it he said going into game seven? No, dude. So I, I rewatched the podcast clip. He said it happened at the garden. So that means it must have been game, game six, six or something. Okay. The chance they oh, that, yeah. Th there you go. So he, he said that at, at some point in the series, most likely game six, they saw the Vancouver Canucks players miming grabbing the cup seemingly looking like they were getting prepared to win and then what they were going to do when they won the cup, how they were going to hand it off to each other. And Char said that they used that as extra motivation going in to win that game and then ultimately going back to Vancouver to win game seven and win the Stanley Cup. Kevin Bieksa on live TV. Well, on everything and then on Hockey Night in Canada last yeah, night. Yes. He, he goes, sounds off. Was like, that is not true at all. We didn't do that. We would never do that. I have no idea what he's talking about. And then he goes on Hockey Night in Canada last night, Sunday night, and talks all about it. And I will say, makes a good point. He was like, someone would have seen that. Yes. That if was we were argument. all doing that, 
someone would have filmed that. Some ice crew member, someone at the arena, another player on the team would have seen that, filmed it, talked about it. It doesn't make sense that over 10 years later, this is finally coming out and no one has ever mentioned it, which is a pretty good bear. Point. Fair point. But this is now this now goes into the is this is this true is this not true is Bieksa misremembering maybe he wasn't a part of it maybe yeah. he was in the locker room who knows but this is some sexy gossip in the NHL world dude so a couple things Chara also went on to say that they heard you know from Garden staff or whatever that the Canucks were asking questions like how many family members are allowed on the ice after mm-hmm. and this reminds me so much of. The there's always a Super Bowl team that's like they they had the parade route planned. Yeah. And I'm like, they already made the shirts. They made the hats, you know. And I'm like, yeah, they have to. It's a massive yeah. city. You have to figure out where the parade route is. Yes, of course, when they were up game from the cup, somebody was asking how many family members are allowed. That's not a question you can ask once you've won. And yeah. they're like they're scrambling, getting aunts and uncles down there. So I love that teams use this, but that made me laugh because he's like, they were asking logistical questions. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> whatever. <Okay. laughs> um, so, Dan, Bieksa said some stuff. That you brought up his best argument. He also said some stuff that was like his biggest emotion was disappointment. Chara is disappointing me because he's disrespecting our organization and our leadership. First ballot Hall of Famers, the Sedin brothers, Luongo. Yeah. They would never let that happen because it's ridiculous behavior. And Chara even insinuating that happened is disrespectful to those guys. And I was kind of like... Yeah, if it was a literal drill at practice. So they were like, okay, whistle, everyone in the corner, now let's begin. But like maybe one dude was getting a water, just like mimed the cup yeah. lifting motion. Some garden staffer saw it, told them. Like, I I, be- I don't think this happened. Genuinely, that's my take. This didn't happen, and you can weigh in too. But yeah. I wouldn't be shocked if someone was like, oh, it did. But it was just like some dude went like this, and then they saw it, and BX was in the locker room and whatever. This, to me, his, his first statements to me felt too defensive. Yeah. Felt like when you're bringing up stuff like the character of certain players. Right. When, meanwhile, that was a pretty contentious series. You've got Alex Burroughs literally trying to bite Patrice Bergeron's finger off. That's not debatable. Correct. That was happening. Most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. Marshand is table topping and flipping people over his back. He's, you know, rock 'em, sock 'em, roboting Daniel Sedin in the face. Yeah. Or I can't remember if it was Henrik, whatever, either one of them. But. This was a, there was bad blood in this series. So let's not talk about the character right. of all the guys in the team. This was a great series. You guys hated each other. It was an unbelievable Stanley Cup final that went to seven games. So that argument felt a little ridiculous to me. Uh, I completely stand by his his point of someone else would have seen this is a good argument. But yeah, you do wonder if, if what Char is saying is he saw two guys on the ice at one point talking about how they were going to pass the cup back and forth. That very well could have happened. But not great that I, I it does sound like Chara said it was the whole team yeah. going through this whole process. It it almost certainly wasn't that. Because to BX's point, you would expect someone at some point would have been like, yo, stop what the fuck you're doing. Cause there are guys who are not about the pre planned stuff. They're not about counting your chickens before they hatch. There's no way everyone in the Canucks would have been okay with that. So there's no way that happened. Yeah. It is a you wonder what levels of truth is the actual reality of this situation. Totally. Because that's, I guarantee Chara saw or heard something. Well, that's the bad fact for Chara, I would say, because in the interview, if you listen to it again, he's like, the first time he says, he says he saw, Mm. we saw, and then he's like, we heard, and then he's like, there were rumors, and I'm like, bro, (laughs) like, get your facts straight here. I'm sure Chara, I'm sure Chara heard someone say something like that, and and you never know. Someone could have made that up to give them false motivation. It's like Michael's secret stuff you Dude. know it's it, someone in the bees organization could have come into the locker room and been like yo we just saw those guys on the team a- a- pretending to pass around the cup don't let them beat you tonight dude that good on this you. exact thing down dan because the my biggest takeaway from this whole saga by far dude is bxa makes this comment he, he said it last night yeah. on hockey night where he goes um because they brought up bulletin board material was yeah. it bulletin board material for the bruins and bxa was like i find the concept of bulletin board material so stupid you're in a final already and what you're like keeping some in the tank just in case someone says something mean about you to fire you up more. And I was like, dude, this is, I disagree completely. Bolton board material is the it's most so real, real thing that's ever Absolutely. happened. And that series, sports are superstitious, dude. Yeah. Horton's dumping garden ice on the Vancouver ice before yeah. game seven. Whatever you need for that mental edge, you take. And I honestly would have liked this take just as much if Char came out and was like, if he had said in his podcast, 
we heard this happened. I don't even know if it don't did care or not, if it was true or but not. It fucking but we fired it. us up, and that's why we won. Then I'm like, you are completely in the right. This conver- this conversation yes. makes perfect sense, and BX are like, dude, bulletin board material is real. I'm not I, I, I agree. I'm, I I am so uh, on BX's side in the this this coming out pissing you off. Yeah, fact check it. Whatever. You know, yeah. fact check it. Who knows if it's true or not, or what level of truth? I do disagree. And, and bulletin board material isn't you're keeping stuff in the tank. Bulletin board r- material is a reserve tank you didn't know you had. Exactly. You're well already, said. you're ready to rock. And then someone says, here's some shit that's been said about you guys. Or here's some people who have been doubting you guys. And you just reach down into the doubt. Da- it's like a mom lifting a bus off of yeah, the baby. Dude. You don't realize you have that strength. But then something happens that makes you dig down even deeper. And then that bus made fun of her hair. And she was like, check this out, yeah, dude. Boom, I'm going to flip this shit baby. over yeah. like a cup. So it is a uh, a really funny piece of gossip going on right yeah. now that's got, you know, uh, a bunch of unreal players just digging back into the annals of history ten over 10 years ago to talk shit isn't about Isn't that funny as we're on a podcast? But isn't that funny about podcast culture these days where it's like this shit comes up now because they get these athletes, you know, on their own being comfortable or they're retired. Who gives a shit? And you yeah. start hearing stories like this. It could be actually was like, I, you would have heard about it. And I was like, well, yeah, this is Charles first Maybe podcast, not. you know, it's true. Uh, all right, let's get into the Quack Attack. Let's get in and move on here. So we're going to talk about the Quack Attack, three hottest teams of this past week. So Quack Attack is the three teams of this past week that we have deemed the hottest teams. Doesn't mean that we say, are saying that they're the three best teams in the league right now. They are the three current hottest teams. And we've dubbed it the Quack Attack because coincidentally, the Mighty Ducks have given us three movies with three Mighty Ducks teams. And we rank those teams. The third best team in the Mighty Ducks movies is going to be, understandably, the Eden Hall JV team. The second best team is going to be the District 5 Mighty Ducks. And the best team, without question, is the Junior Goodwill Games Mighty Ducks. So that is our ranking. Let's get into the three hottest teams of this past week in the Quack Attack. CP, who is the third hottest team? Well, I'll tell you this. Every now and then, there's a, an honorable mention quack, and that team gets a bunch of quacks from us. And it's this true. this week, the Toronto Maple Leafs had a 3-0 and week with two shutouts against the Stars and the Kings. Really nice. They're they didn't hot. quite they're make the third hot. spot, but they're getting really hot. It's a com- it's competitive out here in the quack it attack. It they didn't sure get in the third spot. Can we give the Toronto Maple Leafs some quacks really quick? We yeah. sure can. Quack, 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 quack. Well done, Toronto Maple Leafs. The number three team this week, the Eden Hall JV Ducks, is the New York Rangers. First appearance in the Quack Attack, I believe, Dan. Is that correct? I think so, too. I think so, too. They had a 3-0 and week with some good wins. They beat the Blues 6-4. They beat the Knights 5-1. And they edged the defending, defending Stanley Cup champion Colorado Avalanche 2-1 in a shootout. Um, after a good start, Dan, the rags faltered a little bit here. Um, so it's nice to see them right the ship in some way. They're down to fifth in the Metro, which is not where they thought they'd be. But, you know, maybe a big trade coming for them soon. Maybe something's going to change. But I'm liking the way they're headed. I agree. The number two hottest team in the week of the Quack Attack, the District 5 Mighty Ducks, welcoming to the Quack Attack as well, the Washington Capitals. It's been a tough season for the Caps. Had a bunch of stuff going on with Darcy Kemper coming in net, starting hot, then not being that great. They're kind of figuring it out, but Ovi's doing what he's doing. He's tucking all these goals. He's closing in on 800, which means he's closing in on Gordie Howe's 801 goals. Uh, this is just really, really cool stuff. They are they're on a bit of a tear here. Um You know, we thought that maybe they would miss the playoffs, but it's looking like they're getting it together. They've won four in a row. They beat the Flames. They beat the Oilers recently, then the Flyers and the Kraken. And we have said the Kraken are a playoff They're a real good team. So we've got a nice 4-0 stretch here from the Washington Capitals. I'm loving Ovi's empty netters, too. Yeah, it's really good. Really appreciating this. Yeah, it's just good for the brand. Great for the brand. Great for Ovi. Yeah. Okay, the number one team, the junior Goodwill Games Mighty Ducks, is the Pittsburgh Penguins. Yeah, they're figuring it out. Another hot start, rough middle, hot again team after a 3-0 and week, uh, week with wins against the Blue Jackets and then back-to-backs against your boys, yeah, the Buffalo really Sabres, which we'll talk about in a second. Kind of Sorry to say. They added wins against Vegas and the Blues for a 5-0 and run here. This last dance is turning back into that EDM yeah. EDM bop that we wanted this whole time. It is. Uh, Sid has 38 points in 28 games. He's a sick, sick individual. And yeah, it's amazing that Sid is in the MVP conversation. He's just playing out of his mind. He had that... Keeps the puck in on the board Dude. from his knees, throws a pass across the blue line. He's just playing great. Little Penguins two pad jammer into backhand sauce from your knees. Yeah. Are you kidding me? It's amazing. So that is the quack attack. That's our top three hottest teams of the week. And now let's get into this Matt Duchesne interview. 
Guys, we shot this in Nashville at the Almost Friday Sporting Club, so it's in a bar. You're going to hear a little bit of ambient noise. We, we were, you know, in a crowded bar, but it sounds great because Matt Duchesne is great. It's an absolute blast. We hope you enjoy it as much as we did. Let's get into it. All right, well, the Empty Netters podcast is thrilled to welcome two-time All-Star, Olympic gold medalist, oh. Halliburton native, three times 60-plus point scorer, including 86 points last season, career high, unbelievable stuff. Matt Duchesne, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me, boys. Unbelievable stuff here. Here's what this I need to fantastic. talk about. Dan and I were getting ready for this, and I was like, what do we wear? Like, do we wear our, like, empty netters shirts? Sure. It's like, Dan's like, I'm just going to pop a flannel on, whatever. And I'm like, yeah, I think we play it cool. We look cool. And then Dutchie walks in, dapped up in the nicest suit I've ever seen. He's got a, a t-shirt. He's got a Carhartt suit on. I'm It's humiliated. like the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and like I said to you, I should have known. I know. He was coming right after the game. I should have known, and we should have dressed up a little bit, but... I mean, I think it's better that you're stunting on us right now. Frankly, it makes more sense. Oh, I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I put some product in the hair post game, which I normally don't do, so you guys should feel... Yeah, wow. I'm honored. I'm honored. I'm honored. Just for you guys. <laughs> this you guys is look a, awesome, too. So. This is a big, big yeah, honor. I felt a bit overdressed bad coming yeah. in. Yeah, the true yeah, pads. Yeah, the true pads awesome. I was going to say, you walked into the bar in this unbelievable suit, the boots on. It's just a great look. But he's just... just you're showing everyone do you, up here. Do you want... Um, do you like a dress code? Do you like, like? Do you think everyone should be showing up in suits, or are you like, no, we should be able to swag out like NBA guys um, do? I like anything that could show a little bit of like personality and who you are. I'd yeah. probably wear a suit no matter what, but I'd probably go like t-shirt underneath it a lot we're not yeah yeah it's good we're pretty strict here but uh um yeah we're no tie now which is nice so that's huge yeah it's it's always a pain trying to match everything together with a tie and so it's easier to put it all together so you feel the preds are more strict than other teams you've played for yeah we we have a collared shirt dress code so we we have one implemented like technically like there's no dress code in the league anymore i don't know how it works but yeah we have we have a dress code dude what happens to your tie collection now just oh, collecting, just collecting dust. dust. Yeah. Yeah, dust. It's in the, uh, it's in the, uh, in my, my top drawer, and yeah, very rarely worn, if ever. Now, yeah. There Our, you go. When we went to private school, you know, we play in hockey in prep school, and it was like dress codes there in school, and then you know, growing up, getting jobs, team dress codes, and everything. Our uncle still to this day, every year at Christmas, he gets a bag of ties, and he's like, "Hey, guys, boys, I bought you ties," and I'm like, "Dude." I haven't put a tie on yeah. in 15 years. It Are goes you straight me? <laughs> in a box with all the rest of them. Yeah, it's exactly. Great. And exactly. I can just categorize them from every Christmas. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. Maybe I'll wear them at some point again yeah. in my life. But You'll go uh, to a wedding at some yeah, point we'll that see. might need yeah, it. Yeah, exactly, you know? exactly. Perfect. I usually, yeah. I usually just go with the plain black one that I have. But, yeah, right. Yeah. Here's uh, the problem. You yeah. wear the same one every time. No, exactly. I got 50, so, but I wear yeah. one. Yeah, so well, uh, I'm at that age where there's a lot of weddings, but I'm also just getting past it. Most of my friends are having kids now, so yeah, yeah, not as many weddings going on. Yeah, now. you're not wearing a tie to a baby shower <laughs> yeah, or anything like no. that. <laughs> I'm not really going to any baby showers, <laughs> yeah. boys. Sorry. Yeah. Hey, we got practice. No, hey, uh, another uh, dry land. Sorry. Who, yeah, yeah, who exactly. on the team do you think is the best dresser? And it's okay to say yourself. I mean... I do my best to try and be. I don't know if the guys would would would, would they would say, yeah. but um, we have a few guys that that always look pretty good. Um, we have a pretty well dressed team. Um, tough to pick one guy out. I uh, UC Saros always looks good, and his his doppelganger Alex Carrier always looks yeah. good. They, yeah, they kind of look alike, and um, yeah, I like I like their style. It's uh, they, they always wear they wear a lot of double breasters, which I I like, and yeah, that's I good. Try, I, I wear a lot of those too, so. Um, you know, maybe it's a bias because I, I I wear a lot of the same stuff. Yeah, right. They just dress like <laughs> um, you. I think they look good. Yeah, they look great. Does Yost dress well? <laughs> yeah, he does, but he's always got stuff on himself. Like he's always got. <laughs> he'll have like an off-white hoodie on, like for practice, and it's got like 16 stains on it, and like he'll have a nice suit, and it's got. I'm always giving it to him. Like, dude, like like you're gonna buy this nice clothes. Like, yeah. Like at least like wash it every yeah. now and then, or like yeah. don't leave. Like if your kid, if your baby, like pukes on you like maybe change your sweater before you leave the house you know yeah like, i, I yeah. imagine you can just afford to take that to the dry cleaner or something like he, what are we doing does here? he just get away with that because he's so hot I mean, he must i mean yeah. i don't know we i give it to him pretty good about it. i'm like yeah i, I don't know I, I guess you can't see it on camera when uh, right, he walks right, in yeah. so it's it's hidden a bit but uh yeah i'm always giving him I'm always giving him heck about that yeah i mean i would too anything you can get over him i would be like you have ketchup on your suit again I what the hell are you doing there's there's times there's a you know there's a, a horse race track up in LA in Santa Anita that we go to sometimes to, to bet on the ponies you know and I get an old suit that's like a charcoal suit that's got just enough stains on it that's okay for the track you know like a stained suit is okay for the track I'm not sure it's okay that for track. walking it yeah that like track. you can't go to the derby and <laughs> yeah that, yeah but go correct can... <laughs> but I don't know if it's a stained suit is okay to walk into an NHL game yeah I don't know he uh it's 
yeah, it, it's not as much as suits as his like stuff he'll wear to the rink. It's his like pregame stuff. He wore a hat the other day that was like one that Joe Hansen's company made for for us, and it was just like completely torched. And I'm like, dude, like, did you not see all the sweat stains on that? <laughs> it's like, no, I didn't. See, like, I went golfing in it one time, and I guess I didn't. I'm just like, okay, like. All right, whatever you're, whatever you're doing is working for you. Seriously, so you I, I was going to say, that, that is clearly the recipe of a guy who's just been able to get away with it his whole life. It's like, whatever, it doesn't matter. If and listen, good for him. Hand. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, Matt, this is, th without question, when we found out you were coming on the pod, this is something that I've wanted to know for over a decade. Okay. We in, each have picks, by the way. Like, we went deep yeah, investigated. We're I'm on the like, case here. I've thought yeah. about this a lot. In 2006, you committed to the NCAA. Yeah. I need to know what school. Like, where were you going to go? I, what school? You and I have go to play theory. college, yeah. Okay. What is, and I'm going to be so upset if you're about to tell me right now that there was no school. You were just saying no, you were going to play no, college. No, I, I committed. Okay. I committed to school. You're a Packers fan, right? Uh, yes. You're wrong, though. <sighs> oh, fuck. Okay. I think. All right. I know you're, you thought Badgers. I was right? going to say yeah, Badgers, yeah, no. yeah. Okay. All right. Go I think, on. I think Denver. No. Oh, my God. No. Okay. okay, where? My Mich Michigan State. Oh, oh I, th I was going to, I had Michigan in my head, but not Michigan State. Yeah, Michigan okay. State. Yep. Um, Interesting. So my uncle played and coached there. Um, oh. Yeah, I think he lost the final as a player in the national championship. Um, he won a Mem Cup with Cornwall uh, right before it in 1980. And then back then you could sign like a schoolboy contract. So they were in the queue. Yeah. Um, which meant you're not getting paid. You're like 50 bucks a week. Yeah. So that doesn't nullify your NCAA. Uh, um, eligibility so then he he went and played at Michigan State so and then he won a cup later on so had he won at Michigan State he might have been one of the maybe the only person to have a mem cup NCAA title and yeah. then a, a Stanley Cup that so, would have been epic um, yeah that's yeah, gotta be a small he's still group. coaching the league right now he's been coaching in the NHL since 97 and uh, yeah we we had some family history there and basically for me I didn't know what was gonna happen with the OHL draft and um, at 16 it's tough to tough to leave home to go to certain places and and at you know there was a lot of teams that were kind of rerouting and new coaches new new all kinds of things and um the coach of brampton was a close friend of ours and they had the fifth pick and um ended up going fifth to brampton at that point it was that was the best option but michigan state we were looking at before then i was going to start taking online courses and try and yeah. excel my high school and graduate as grade 11 instead of grade 12 so i'd go there a year earlier because uh, the route was going to be play junior in Ontario, play junior in the USHL, and then go play at Michigan State. So it would have been a lot as a young kid. Yeah, for sure. So yeah. it, anyway, it worked out good. I obviously, I played two, two years of junior in Brampton and ended up in Colorado the next year. Yeah, so, doing okay yeah. there. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it worked out, but uh, I still always cheer for Michigan State football and uh, Ruth, Ruth among the okay. family Okay, well, actually, two questions. First question, was there a cutoff? in that OHL priority draft like if you were like if I don't if I go you know first round priority fifth I'm gone if I don't go that high I'm going to Michigan State was there a number you had in your mind um, or did it not matter so my dad always said like going in when we knew by the time the draft came around that where I was ranked and stuff yeah. I kind of knew where I was going to go but um he always said like if you're not a first or second round pick in the O like you know school is going to be what we're going to yeah then we're going to do it yeah obviously people sometimes talk like oh if I if I don't play junior, I'm going to play college. As if college is, especially in Canada, as if college is worse, and it's not. It's the exact same level of hockey, and if not at times tougher because there's older players. But um, our thing was always like, okay, unless it's a guarantee that I can get a good school package in the O, because they give you school money, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So I could have, if I never played pro, I could have gone to university in Canada for free. So it, it worked. That's how they combat. That's kind of sick. Yeah. Yeah. That's how they combat the oh. I want my kid to have an education thing. Well, your kid's going to get one still if right. you do, if, if you get the, the school money, right? So the higher you go in the draft, the more school money you get. So it was a it was a win-win. And after I got drafted, like, I, I knew I had a chance to play in the NHL and, you know, I'd play young in the NHL. So that was the fastest route, and that was always what it was and about. And that's, that's, that's all you got eyes on at that age, you yeah, know what I mean? Like, yeah, just get me know, to the you show. You know what? It's, <laughs> it's funny. Like, looking back, there's stuff in junior I wish I enjoyed more. I wish I sure. kind of immersed myself in more. For me, it was just all about – how fast can I make this right. process of being a junior and get to the next level? And, um, you know, so I, to, if I, would I go back and do it differently? No, I don't think so, but maybe a little bit at times. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I would just, I think I wouldn't be as, I, I put a lot of pressure on myself. I've always been that way, but especially in junior, like, because I wanted to play at 18. That was always yeah. my goal. I want to be an NHL player at 18 years old. Yeah. And was lucky enough to accomplish that. But, you know, there was, uh, there was times I think I probably could have a little more fun while I was there. Sure. 
No, no listen, as a couple guys that took a lot of college midterms and finals, <laughs> I don't think you, you didn't miss, miss much. much there. <laughs> and Dude. then, but hold on, second question. Ashley, your wife has yeah. family in Ohio. They're like huge Ohio. Isn't your brother-in-law a huge Ohio State yes, fan? Yes. So like, I don't know how that would. I don't know if that would have sit that well if no, you were a Michigan State guy. I know. I didn't meet my wife till I moved to Denver after. So, um, yeah. I think they hate Michigan more that, than Michigan yeah, State. Sure. Yeah, I was going to say, you skate by with the Michigan yeah. State yeah, of it. Like, it's hey, like, I'm a state guy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, relax. Her, yeah. Uh, yeah, her brother's an absolute diehard Ohio State guy. They're originally, their family's originally from Ohio, and they, they, they all were in Denver, and now they're actually, they all moved out here. So, oh, um, huge. Her whole family, uh, actually, they were out at the game tonight, and um, uh, they, uh, yeah, they're loving Tennessee. I mean, this is... This is this is it, man. This is the best spot. Oh yeah, it's unreal. So your second year in the O, you guys lose to Windsor in yeah. the Mem Cup. Do you think about that ever? Is that yeah, something it, that you're it like? Wasn't, well, it wasn't the Mem Cup. It was the final of the OHL. Yeah, to that's go right. To, the Mem to Cup. go to the Mem Cup, right? Yeah, I mean, I would have loved to have played in that tournament. I mean, yeah. you want to win as much as you can all the way up, and <clears throat> it's funny how, you know, guys' resumes they always throw in a Mem Cup if they've won it, right? Yeah, or a World sure. Junior Gold yeah. if they've won it, and like. <laughs> You know, junior is such a crapshoot, right? There's a lot of really good players that win, that don't ever win anything in junior, and there's a lot of guys that never go past junior that win a lot, right? So whether it's World Juniors or Mem Cup or whatever. So um, I would have loved to, though. I mean, my, actually, my cousin, my uncle I was talking about that played at Michigan State, his son's my age, and he played. He was a uh, backup goalie for the Kelowna Rockets, and they made it that year, and we were one series away from from going. And, and so it would have been unbelievable to have both of us you know, first cousins at the same. Would have been Cup. insane. You know, out of yeah. five teams in the CHL, the My same God. year. So that that would have been nice for sure. I mean, yeah, I, I definitely. I don't. I don't really still think about it, but because I mean, we we had a, a lot of injuries, and they were just they were at a, a better roster than we did. Yeah, uh, they were. They had deep, some they weapons had some on studs, that team. Yeah. Like Halsey was on that yeah. team. Yeah. Hall and Ellis and and. And uh, it's nice that you guys like you guys lose to Windsor, and then they went on to win the Mem Cup, which I think always feels good. Like yeah. you lost to the team that yeah. won. Yeah, I mean. Have we been our, our one our goalie? We had Thomas McCollum and Net, who was a really high, highly touted goalie. He was a first round pick to Detroit. He was unbelievable, and he uh, he blew he he hurt with his knee pretty bad. He couldn't push off one way. Oof. Um, our uh, our Russian stud at the time had a concussion, didn't play the series, and then Cody Hodson was our other top guy on the team, and he was he was sick. He and I were sick the entire series. We just yeah. So. It's definitely not excuses because they were better than us. They were yeah. a better team. But, but, but I mean, I think we could have at least taken them to six or seven, not five sure. games, you know? Yeah. So uh, I have questions about that Russian stud. What was his deal? Evgeny Grachev. <laughs> yeah. Grachev as a weapon. I think he was, was he the one, one, I think maybe the only guy on the team who had more points than you? He had, he had 40 goals. Um, like, I mean. I don't know yeah. how many points he had, but um, Cody won CHL player of the year that year. So he had an unbelievable That's year. That's right. Cody um, had a monster he, season. He was, he was third year junior just been drafted high and he was he was uh he was outstanding um and then Grachev won rookie of the year that year and there was some funny there were some rumors that he might have been actually an overager playing as <laughs> oh a, wow playing as a 90 birth year do you know any truth to those rumors? Yeah. Or? <laughs> but it wouldn't surprise me because the guy was a freak. Yeah. He's he was like, a freak. you guys are all 17 years old. He's got full chest hair and a he beard was, in the shower. It wasn't even that. He was absolutely shredded. Really? And he, uh, yeah, there might have been some Russian gas somewhere in yeah, there. For sure. Uh, I, he I'm was, certain I mean, was. the guy could play. He was my line mate for a lot of the year, and it was so fun to play with him. He just, you'd give him the puck, he'd score. He was yeah. such a good goal Isn't scorer. Isn't that such a treat? It was great. Yeah. I'm surprised he, I I love the guy. Like he was such a fun guy to be around. And I'm not sure what happened to him post junior. He just I, kind of. I was, I was about to ask. To ask. Yeah. Like I, you know, I, it's always such a crapshoot. So many yeah. things happen, injuries, bad situations. But he is one of those guys that kind of looks at you. Look at his play on the ice at that high level. You're kind of surprised that he doesn't do more in the NHL. He, yeah, he never really got a sniff. He was a Rangers guy, and he uh, he reminded me of like kind of like a Malkin Svechnikov like kind of mix. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. To use, and I know those are two Russians, but Russians always look alike. Right? I was gonna they say they're easy to compare. They, yeah. they always, yeah. So he was, he was like six foot three, like two twenty, just skate like the wind, like, like shoot the puck. I was, was about to say, I bet he had a great shot. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> great shot. And they all, every Russian can shoot. Oh yeah, they all shoot absolutely. Left and they all can rip the puck. So um, he was just a typical like one of those guys, and um, I was shocked to see him not kind of have a really good career in the NHL. 
yeah, I, I feel bet. like that happens at every level, right? You know, as, as all the way down to youth hockey, guys yeah. just flame out. But it's rare when someone's that good at that high of a level, and it doesn't quite, yeah. doesn't quite translate. Yeah, and he took a really big step from like his draft year. He was a second round pick to his to his yeah. you know first year in the OHL, which would have been his like yeah, third yeah. year or whatever, age wise. But yeah, yeah allegedly, was, allegedly, was, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it, yeah. <laughs> The rookie overager. Yeah. Who knows, right? <laughs> say, he flamed out because he was actually 37 when he yeah. went to the NHL. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you guys always hear those those phony birth certificate stories, and you know some of them I've heard are you know the ones that are confirmed. I won't I won't sell I won't sell those guys out. But I, I, there's a the few air. of them that you I, know I've, a few that are there's like, a few yeah. that I've heard are 100 percent confirmed. Yeah. So yeah. I love that. They Whatever, dude. It's make it to you. Make just it. Misstated yeah. it by two or three years yeah. difference. Yeah. My bad. We can't, no one can read Russian yeah, exactly. anyway. It's like, whatever. Uh, that looks like okay. a... Okay, <laughs> dude, so uh, NHL draft, your draft, you go third overall. Tavares, Hedman, you, all you were getting talked about, that top pick, you know, who knows what's going to happen, but you were a big Avs guy growing yeah. up. So you're like visibly fist pumping when yeah. Hedman goes second. It's right? one of the great videos the of all time. It's, it's incredible, right? Yeah. So, and that's cool because Sackick's like a boyhood idol. Well, hold okay. on. Did you catch any heat from Bolts fans from that? Never, no. Good. Never. I never. Funny, actually. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I never did. Um, I mean, it just made sense. Like, Avs fans wanted you. And Tampa. Like, who doesn't want to go play in Tampa, right? Yeah, Yeah. true. But I was like, I'm such a hockey fan, like, and like hockey, like nerd, like all day long. That you know, to have a chance to play for my favorite team, and like, it wasn't just my favorite team. I like idolize these guys. Yeah, yeah. And Saka had just stepped into that role. Exactly. Joe. Joe wasn't part of the organization yet, but I, I. I knew he was retiring. Like my first game was his jersey retirement. I was gonna like, say he just still, retired. Yeah. I still look at Joe like, like a god. You know, he's 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 a, he's, just an amazing. Obviously, one of the best players ever, but just an amazing human being on all, like off the ice and great leader. And he's you know he's a guy. Every time I see him, like, you know, um, we always you know, shake hands, hug. Like yeah, yeah I love that. He's awesome. So uh, yeah, he's. Uh, Actually, his daughter goes to the University of Alabama, so I told him if he's ever out this way. He loves Nashville, too. Yeah. I told him if he's ever out this way because he was, he was giving me shit about uh, being a member at Troubadour. He's like, dude, like you got to take me out. I'm like, dude, you tell me yeah, when and yeah. where. Yeah, and come, come, today. Where, come yeah. visit your kid, yeah. and we'll go out and yeah, play. Yes, exactly. I'm like, yeah, come see Cameron in, in Alabama, at, in Tuscaloosa there, and drive up and play some golf or yeah. something. Yeah, so incredible. That's he's, unreal. He's the best. Well, dude, so here's my question. He becomes GM, right, and he's like, you're – boyhood hero a god agree yep. he t- took that team to the cup you know he becomes the gm and then and and trades for agency that's part of the game i think one yep. thing that you all everyone talks about is like it's a business dude you, yep. you, you grow up playing this game and you love it but it's a business that's just part of the game was it weird talking to your literally your boyhood idol on the team that you grew up loving being like hey can i i want to play somewhere else yeah was that a hard yeah, conversation? that was hard that was yeah I, he came i i it was kind of funny like December of that year, you know, and we had been rebuilding forever. We weren't, yeah. you know, spending a lot of money in free agency. It was just like, just felt like it was never going to end. And we were kind of stuck. I was kind of stuck. And I wanted to have a chance to play. In the playoffs. You dude. know, in the playoffs. Yeah. And obviously that team took off um, the next few years. Um, but like at the time, like you can only, there's no crystal ball. You can only look at the cards that you have for in sure. your hand. For right? sure. And I mean, yeah, it was hard. I mean, he came over to my house. He sat yeah. at the kitchen table and. You know, we talked, and he was always awesome about it. And I mean, yeah. he. What was the coolest part is he didn't want to get. He didn't want me to leave, right. which was made even harder. And so flattering. And I wanted dude, to yeah. work. I wanted to work, and I was just like Joe. Like, we just don't have much common man. Like, we don't have much in the system. Like, you know, no one knew what Kale McCarr was yet. Yeah, I mean, right. That guy comes in and changes. Seriously. Almost, like, as good as like the forwards were on that team or are on that team, that guy comes in, and I mean, he's he's a freak. He's so so darn good, and. Um, kind of put them over the top to end up winning, right? So um, we just had no idea what was going on. And I had several people that were, like, talking to me and just being like, Dutchie, I think I think you got to try and get out and try and move on and, you know, give yourself a chance to, to do something. And, you know, um, obviously they, they went on and did some big things the last couple of years. And But it was a totally different team. So it was Absolutely. like there was, yeah, yeah. there was nothing. Like, I never really look at it like, oh, geez, I should have stayed because no if I way. did, I would have won the – like it, it, things completely change. Of Cap room changes. I was two years away from a new contract, and I wanted. To, I knew that was probably gonna be the biggest one I would I would sign and in my career, and I wanted to put myself in the best position. So it was it was incredibly hard. I mean, when actually when the trade went through, he um, he pulled me into we're we're in. Um, this is one of the greatest moments of my life, actually. 
Because um, you got not, pulled not mid game, right? Yes. Yeah. Not the trade part, because that, that was so bittersweet. Like, I was excited to have a new chance, but it was so. I, I was can't heartbroken imagine. to leave Colorado. Yeah, and for sure. It hurt. Like, the kid in me, it hurt. But again, it's a business, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, it's not. It's not no. You're not a fan of your team. You, you work for your team, <laughs> right. right? Yeah. So, it's, it, so he pulled me. Like we're at the Barclays Center. He pulled me into this, like, it's like a broom closet. And he put his hands on my shoulders, and he's like, hey. And did you know? Uh, he's dude, like, right I then. did this. I already knew I was traded. Yeah. Because um, I came off the ice, but he's like, I did this for you. Like, go, you know, have a great, you know, good luck. And, like, I just want you to know I did this for you. And, like, he was, like, a little bit emotional. And God, I was I'm like, going to cry. Dude. I was no, like, seriously. oh, my God. I was, like, I was almost crying because I was, like, this is one of the best moments of my of my life, like, in terms of my idol, like, treating me that way and having that respect. And, yeah, I mean, I think about that a lot. That was – Definitely. I always say leaving Colorado is the hardest thing I ever had to do because it, it was more than just my team. It was, like – I was in love with that franchise from the time I yeah, was a kid. For so sure. it was really, really tough. And, um, and you know, like you, I, you met your wife there, yes, like exactly. there's so much yeah, there stuff was a there. Lot there. It just, it wasn't the right fit for me at the time. And I never, there's no, I have zero regrets because my life is even with them winning and everything. My, it was just, I needed to move on. I just needed a new start. I needed no to doubt. feel fresh. And, um, we're in love, heading over, over heels in love with Nashville. And yeah. this is, this would be home forever. Like we're never, you know, whether I, you know, they resign me after this deal or, you know, you get traded at some point. Who knows what the future holds? I hope not. I, I'd love yeah. to finish my career here in Nashville. And um, we're, we're living in Nashville the rest of our life. That's This is home. That's awesome. Yeah, that's Man, I was going to say at the start of this, it was almost cruel that Joe became the GM. Because you not only did you have to leave your uh, yeah. hometown team, but you also had to say it to Joe. Yeah. But after hearing that story, I actually think it was beautiful that it was Joe. Because yeah. like, it, it was yeah. so personal. The way that you it shared that out, moment. The way it turned out, and there was never any bad blood or hard feelings. Yeah. Another funny story, too, is when the trade was kind of close, we went on a road trip. And I packed a massive suitcase, and because you, you kind of knew always had. Oh, I knew it was close, right? Yeah. And he and I always <laughs> always had the same suitcase, which was hilarious. So one said JS, one said MD yeah. on it. They're both to me like suitcases, and he goes to grab it. I'm like, oh shit, Joe just grabbed my bag, <laughs> and it's like, and like so we're like on that it trip, weighs 150 on that pounds. Trip, oh, we were God. going to Sweden to play against Ottawa, right? Yeah. So I I go, Joe just grabbed my bag. He's gonna feel how heavy it is. Like, he goes, he goes, he goes, Dutchie, is this your bag? I'm like, yeah. He's like, it's a little heavy, eh? He's like, why is that? Kind of winks at me. Like, like that's the kind yeah, of relationship yeah. we had. Like, yeah. it was like, it's incredible, man. It was such a. It, he made it easy because it was never personal, and he knew where we were at as a franchise. Yeah. I'd been there for eight years. Yeah. You know, whatever. I was kind yeah. of the most senior guy of our core, like group, and it was, you know, I. It made the most sense for me to be the guy that you know, brought some return and moved yep. on. So yep. yeah. hundred percent. Imagine was, telling eight year old Matt that Joe Sack is going to be uh, winking at you. I, yeah, I, I, exactly. I would, you want to turn into a puddle. I, I was all yeah. Like, yeah. What do you mean? Yeah. No, no, you no <laughs> I'm not doing that. No way. <laughs> no, no. I was going to say, when you, when you think about the other way that could have gone yeah. with all of those pieces in place, this is your childhood team, a guy yeah. that you idolized and you think about that scenario, it could have gone so horribly. Yeah. So what a dream it is that it went the way it went. And you guys still have a great relationship. That's yeah. such an unbelievable situation. Yeah, and like I texted when they won the cup, I texted him like the next day and yeah, I bet. I'm like, he put that team together and yeah. he's so smart. He was the architect of that and you know, they started to spend a little bit more at, in UFA or a free agency and they made some they had some good traffic. I mean Makar, I mean that year they we we were supposed to have number one pick. And we oh, lost dude, the lottery right. and fell to four. My God. That's right. And you and they, somehow wind up with Kale. And you get Kale. at four, and he probably only slipped because he was playing Canadian Junior A. And yeah. when you play that, everyone's a little bit like Unsure, wary right? yeah. of yeah. how good because of the competition. But, I mean, that was a blessing in disguise for the that franchise, obviously. For and, sure. So, yeah, I mean, kind of wild how it all went. But, you know, like I said, I have no regrets. And um, yeah. I'm, I've never been happier in, in terms of where I'm playing and family and everything. We love Nashville. And yeah. This is home. I was about to say, man, you have one of the most interesting careers in terms of places you've played because it feels like everywhere you've been has some sort of personal connection to you. Yeah. It's like Colorado's your childhood team. Yeah. Then you go to Ottawa, which is what, like three hours from yeah, Halliburton? Three hours, yeah. yeah. And then you go to Columbus and your wife's family, ha you know, she has yeah. family in Ohio. Yeah. And then you go to Nashville, which is the epicenter of so many of your personal interests yeah, and yeah. now has become so seamlessly the place that you and your family call home. It's like, yeah, I don't know. Sure. I can't yeah. think of anyone else who's like, so yeah, sick. everywhere I've played, actually has like a pretty cool connection to my personal life yeah it's amazing yeah i never thought about uh columbus that way um just because but yeah i mean it is my I'm, my uncle actually was part of the inaugural uh columbus team so he coached there oh get out so Jesus. yeah so there was some connections and it was funny the other day i was thinking about it and our uh i played for 
like three summer teams. I played for a few, bunch of summer teams growing up, but three of the teams I played on that had NHL jerseys. One was the Nashville, our third jersey, or Nashville's third jersey. Uh, the other one was I played for two teams that wore Blue Jackets jerseys, and I played for another one that, that wore Avalanche third jerseys. Wow. So I was just like, how did <laughs> It was that, destiny, dude. Good like, Lord. Ottawa was the only one I ever had, and, you know, obviously being that close to home, there's still a connection there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, right right from the time I left, I was leaving Denver. I wanted to come here. I wanted to come to Nashville, but I, I wouldn't trade my stops in Ottawa and Columbus for the world. I mean, they were great experiences, and we had the best – playoff run in columbus history i was gonna say dude that lightning yeah, upset was, was sick. sick i mean even that the boston, was so sick even yeah. the boston series like if we get by them you know Yo, game we're from there obviously so we <laughs> sorry yeah. we're rooting for no, the bees in okay, that one. Yeah. Yeah. but that game three uh you had you kicked the shit out of the bees in that game and yeah. if that game goes the other way it's, yeah it's game so we won game three at home it was, oh, game it was four. four that's one yeah game that's the one that's we right. laid, well so we lost in double ot first game we won in double ot second game game three we won we played really good we had them on the ropes and then their big boys hadn't got on the board yet. Yeah. That's kind of what happened against Tampa. They, like Kucherov and Stamkos and those guys, they didn't, they weren't able to kind of break through. Right. And when your big boys aren't on the board, they're not feeling, you know how it is, right? You got to you get yeah. on the board, you want to feel the puck. Uh, we took like two penalties early in game four. And then it was like Pasternak from Bergeron and Marchand. Yeah. It was like, oh shit. Yeah. Like, oh like, God. And then, and go. then uh, Tuka Rask, uh, the next three games played yeah. out of his mind. We hit in the last uh, 61 minutes of the series, we hit six crossbars. I was about so to say, you guys was, rang iron like crazy in that and then series. They were winning goal against us in game six. This is when I knew it was over because you can just feel it. It's hockey guy. Yeah, oh, yeah, of course. Like, oh, yeah. shit, this isn't meant to be. Uh, DeBrus comes down the wing, takes a slap shot, hits a crossbar, goes right onto Krejci's oh. stick, and he shoots it in the open net. And I'm yep. like, okay, so we've hit six. Yep. And now it's. They like, get one, and it's know, a doorstep tap in. Yeah, so every crossbar. Uh, it, it was just like, okay, like, this isn't meant to be. Yeah. It, which, and then they go to the finals. They steamrolled Carolina the next series, and we'd done real well against them. I always look at that as that was my closest opportunity to, you know, win the cup was that year. And For real. I really yeah. think that if we get by them, we go to the finals. And oh, definitely, man. And the Blues, right? yeah. so, you guys had a God. wagon of a team that we had a year. Good team. Oh, my God. If you God. look at the roster, it was deep. Oh, yeah. It was really deep. So. It was uh, uh, now that I think about it too. That uh, that Tampa sweep that was just a nice little motherfuck to Tampa for you again. Like you're just yeah. at every phase in your yeah. career, you're uh, fist pumping their face when you yeah. get drafted, <laughs> and you sweep them out of the playoffs. Yeah. I mean, oh, had, it's great. They've uh, they've had their they've had their share of success lately too. So. Yeah, yeah. Tampa's yeah. doing okay. Um, yeah, they're, yeah, they're, they're doing alright. I don't feel right. bad. For I don't Tampa. think they're losing any sleep over those. Yeah. Two no, things, no, that's I don't for think sure. so. Um, so we're at the game tonight, and I'm a big. Personally, I'm a big superstition guy and like equipment guy. Okay. And I'm noticing your stick. Yep. And your top tape is like a foot long. Okay. And admittedly, I know that you write some stuff on that. Yep. So I want to hear about that. Okay. And then I also want to get into it sounds like you change up your your gear often. Like you're, you're changing the, out there. you're changing yeah. the flex, you're changing your skate yeah. sharpening, like what's going on there? Um I do and I don't. When I find something I really like, I stay with it. But I'm always trying to find that next. I, I think, like, the old saying, like, you don't have to be sick to get better. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's <laughs> yeah. kind of. So I, I think that's, a that's like, something that, you know, I heard a few years ago. And it's true. I've always been that way. You can always. doesn't matter if it's in the in the dressing. Or, sorry. doesn't matter if it's in, in the weight room or, you know, on the turf or equipment-wise. So, yeah, a couple of years ago, I, I lengthened my stick a little bit and uh, changed the flex with that length because, Right, yeah, yeah. Um, what, what flex do you have now? I'm an eight, 80, 80, 80, yeah, 80? I'm an 80. I'm an 80, yeah. 80. Zero. 80 flex, yeah. Wow. I was 70 Damn. before, but my stick was this long. So <laughs> my stick's like normal length now. So, so hold on. You were a 70 flex. Yeah. I started in the in the league at 120. Uh, dude, that's what I was going to say. I at 70. I cut my what, stick down. What, what kind of made you do that? Like, why? Also, what, also, I mean, are we just a, out of touch? Like, is everyone in the league playing with like an eighty now, or are you? A lot of weird? guys are eighty-five. Uh, okay. I think I'm. In, I'm trying to think if I'm an eighty or an eighty-five. One of the two. So you was, dropped fifty maybe flex. It's an yeah, dude, straight. Yeah. You literally dropped fifty yeah. flex. I was going to say when we were playing, we were like one hundred five, one ten, yeah. and then now I was going to joke with you like now we both have eighty-five because I'm like I can't lift a snapshot unless I have yeah. an eighty-five. I think, but I still down, can't lift yeah, a backhand. Yeah. And I, it's think, like, I think I use an eighty-five. I think it's an eighty-five. I mean, eighty, eighty-five doesn't really matter, but yeah, um, kind of same thing. So, yeah, what I did. So, kind of the progression was I had the same length sticks I have now when I was funny enough when I first came to the league and I when I lengthened it again I didn't even look at it it just yeah. ended up the same length um, really stiff then I cut it down I was training a lot with with uh, I hired same trainer as uh, 
uh, Crosby. And oh, nice, yeah. He's still my guy. He's the best. I've uh, been with him for – I was, like, one of his first two or three guys in the league. And uh, so Sid and I trained a lot together, and I was kind of like coming off a tough year, a lot of injuries, and I saw how short a stick was. I was like, you know, I'm going to try that. Yeah. So I cut it. I took his stick. I cut – I put a mark, and then I cut it halfway between ours, and then I ended up going down to his. It was really stiff. Um you know, felt good, and then and then as time went on, I was like, I'm gonna try whip beer. Yeah. So I went whip beer, whip like so. Th- anyway, and then I changed my curve. I started using Joe's Sackex actual yeah. curve. Yeah. Didn't we all do not that? that not that one though. That's not the actual one. <laughs> oh, okay. The actual one. Of course. Yeah. yeah I was gonna <laughs> and, uh, say that's the one yeah. that us plebeians that's, use. That's and, yeah. P, yeah. P. Uh, P92. That's like the yeah, most yeah, exactly. Curve in the world. Correct. Yeah. So um, so then I I started using the actual one. I had to drop it down even a little bit more because of the lie. And then uh, switch back to switch to what I'm using now, and then eventually lengthen it. Yeah, so it's been a been an adventure over the career. But, <laughs> I was gonna uh, say um, I'm always just trying to play around with it. And you know, last year I scored more goals on shots than any year of my career, and I, I it was it was from the the length and the um, you know just the leverage and yeah you know it keep, let, more reach yeah up. gets you more yeah. pucks yeah the small stick was an advantage for a while because you could beat guys with quickness and speed more. And now yep. it's about everyone's so fast that. The only, there's one guy in the league who beats people with speed. Yeah, yeah. David, yeah right? I've never heard yeah. of him. So that, yeah. yeah, and it's and you know, so now it's all about leverage and having your head up and reach and all that stuff. Yeah, so, for sure. Yeah. And uh, yeah, tape job on the top. I always went off after uh, uh, Kovalchuk. Yeah. Was one oh, of my really? players, so that's why I did that. Tape job at the bottom is Peter Forsberg. So oh, those sick were like the combo, two guys. dude. So, wow. Damn. <laughs> I started doing that when I was like 13. Never changed. So. Um, so I thought, it was, what I, thought was on just, the I thought you just needed enough room to write everything on the top. Yeah, I was yeah, yeah. Say. Exactly. <laughs> what was on the stick tonight? <laughs> um, I always have the same. I, so every year I kind of have a theme for the yep. season, and uh, it could be something going on in personal life or like I'm a big music guy, so usually the main thing is a is a lyric or title. Right. Yeah. And um, so it's almost like tattoos, like how tattoos mean something to people. I kind of do that with my stick. So for sure, I have um, I have some initials for like friends and family up top, like just kind of encompassing everybody. I have uh, F and L sixteen, which means free and loose. Sixteen, like basically play like that, like play free and loose. Yeah. Like I was sixteen years oh, old. Oh, I love that. Um, and then the lyric I have is the crow, which is a uh, is part of a uh, Hardy song. Um, mm-hmm. So he uh, he has like his new album coming out is he's one of my favorites. Has is half country, half rock, and that's what I've always listened to is, ha- is country and yeah. rock. And that song's called the Mockingbird and the Crow and it talks about how he was like kind of came up with traditional like music and then once he got to it he did things his way and a little differently and i kind of identify with that and just like my kind of my career and always you know kind of you know the whole you know having to leave colorado thing just my career's been a little bit more exciting for better and for worse than a lot of people's and and i do things a little differently at times and and so that's kind of i kind of identify with that and it's got a lot of you know that song's got a lot of uh you know punch to it too so and then i've got uh, below that i've got uh my uh, favorite bible verse tattooed on my body philippians 4 13 yeah. uh with a cross and then i've got uh, my kids my two kids names and then bd3 for baby duchene number three which oh is nice so i was about to say yeah. so we don't have a name picked out yet yeah. we everyone thinks we do we have nothing yeah so that's do you know be, uh, it's like boy or girl now, it's uh yeah you I'm don't have to gonna, tell us i'm not gonna say yeah you don't have to say it. i'm not gonna say but uh because everyone we, we 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 know what it is but we've also heard people that thought they knew what it was and it comes out something different oh so wow yeah we'll see what there, happens yeah that's <laughs> smart yeah. Yeah. yeah hold the, hold people those cards get, some people get surprises at the end so yeah we'll see how have you have you picked most of the names you have for your kids so far are are personal like family stuff Do, are you going to keep that trend yeah or, so yeah. bo is it's not a family name um we just loved it uh, his middle names are family yeah david it's in my is my middle name my dad my grandpa's middle name and then my and wife's Newell, right? dad's yeah. first name my wife's yeah my wife's dad's first name is david and then newell is is a family name so my uncle coach yeah. his name's yeah, yeah yeah and then my grandpa's first name is newell and um yeah that's that's got some history to it and then my daughter her middle name same as my wife's middle name yep. and then james is actually a family name on my mom's side but for boys obviously right but we love that name for girl we threw a y into girly it up a little love bit. it's a good yeah. move yeah, yeah it's class, i was noticing class, that class, i was like the y is my like... favorite name for girl this time around is a boy name also so we'll see I my wife 
My wife doesn't know what we're gonna do yet. Yeah, no spoilers. I, no spoilers. I, I would name her right now, but my wife's kind of like, uh, we don't. She does. She's not sure. She's got to see her first. So yeah. girls are harder to name than boys. We had a boy named Dunn. If it was, well, I guess I just said it was. I was girl. about to say was you like, just yeah. like Matt. I, I didn't want to call thing, you yeah. out, but yeah. you definitely yeah. just spilled yeah. so the beans. We'll, we'll, we'll cut it. We'll cut it. We'll cut it. We're having a girl. <laughs> we'll edit that out. We'll edit that. No, it's yeah. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Oh, that's great. All right, you're talking about you've got Forsberg down on your blade. What the hell is up with Johansson's? Blade tape. Just That's heel? the ugliest thing I've, never, I've ever I've seen. The only in my guy I've seen tape a stick like that was Mike York back in the day. I mean, so, it is. I don't know what, what's going on it's, there. You can't not notice it. It's yeah. so absurd looking. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't know what. Uh, Does she get is. shit for that in the locker no, room? No, never. It's. Uh, it's. Uh, sorry, my phone's blowing up. Yeah, yeah. I no. to make sure my wife wasn't going. Yeah, into I was labor about to say we need to make sure. Uh, he's not going to labor yeah, right now. No. Uh, um, no, we d no one really says anything to about it, but they just let it ride. Joey's Joey. He just whatever. Joey's Joey. Yeah, he yeah, just does fair, his thing. Fair, fair. Yeah, good Can't Lord broke it. the mold when he made him. Yeah. that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> An absolute stick. Uh, okay, uh, 2014 gold medal, all time moment, incredible, right? You get added to the roster semifinal round after Tavares got hurt, by the way. Yeah. So, yeah. which I know. Yeah, you Yeah, no, I was on the I was on the team the whole time. Yeah, yeah, just but, yeah, popped into the I, lineup, I, right? Yeah, yeah, I was out. I was out the the Latvia game, and I kind of knew I was getting back in the next one. They kind of told me and then jt went down yeah and i was like okay i'm i'm, I mean, I'm going I'm I, dying. that'll yep. be the spot i fill so then um yeah I, I mean my my olympic performance wasn't kind of what i wanted it to be because i was to be honest i was scared shitless of I was course dude. the youngest guy on the team and you're you're you go i actually my my game my my semi-final and final are my best two games the other games i played i didn't i didn't i wasn't that great because i was just i was so nervous because you're like I don't want to blow this for my country. Yeah. Like we're expected to win, we're supposed to win. You're all the way in like, Sochi. Yeah, like yeah, there's yeah. so yeah. much. I was 22. Like I was, yeah, I was, I was pretty nervous. And so then the next time I was able to make the big team and at the at the World Cup, I'm yeah. like, okay, I am not doing Chilling. that again. Yeah. And, yeah. and I was really happy with how the tournament went for me personally. And obviously we won, which yeah. that's all that matters in those things. It doesn't matter how well you play or how, how how well you don't. I guess as long as you win. So, but you get, um, I get that wanting that to be a big moment because you're like, yeah, Dude, I yeah. Like I, like I, about I didn't, shit. Yeah. I didn't like how, I, I was I was overwhelmed a little bit and very nervous and anxious in that, in that in that uh, in Sochi and until I got back in and then I was like, okay, I can't play like I just played. I gotta yeah. play better and yeah. and be more comfortable and just the, play looser. The break I was maybe tight. was kind of helpful. Actually, yeah, it was even. good. Yeah. I, I got to refocus. I was yeah. grateful for not playing that game and just kind of getting to watch and refocus. So so. Semifinals, you beat the U.S. Yeah. one nothing. Jamie Ben, and then you beat Sweden for the gold. Yeah. What felt cooler, beating us or the gold medal game? Don't lie. <laughs> Honestly, so the gold medal game, we kind of knew if we showed up that we were going to win because yeah. Backstrom was out. He got tested for something. I don't even remember what it was. And they had one of the Sedins, I think, got hurt or like they had, they were banged yeah, yeah. up. And the U.S. had was probably our biggest challenge. For sure. We I think we knew that it was ours to lose at that point against the U.S. It was like we'll see and. We didn't score a lot of goals that tournament. We we kind of played keep away and and just kind of waited for you know that one chance that would come and um, it wasn't the most exciting hockey, but it was very stingy and just we'll take it, dude. Kind yeah. of it kind was of a like, good game though, and you're I mean you were nails that game. Like I'm not just saying that. I remember <laughs> being like I'm serious because I remember that game. It was you know one nothing yeah. game. I think second period Jamie Ben goal or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, tip in, I think, and, from the point. Yeah, and I, it was just that game. It was like it, there were there were so few penalties. It felt like yeah. whatever is going to be the first fight. goal. It was, yeah. it was a dog fight. And, you know, I don't have very many memories from that game, to be honest. I think I was just so overwhelmed. But yeah, just I, fully I blacked out. out. Like, yeah. I, remember <laughs> being, I remember being tight and, like, just, you know, every shift you get out there, you're like, okay, I got to win the draw, and then I got to make sure I'm not getting scored on kind of thing. It was one of those things. And, and just trying to do whatever you could offensively when you could make the right play. And, yeah. you know, hockey, we can make it really complicated sometimes mentally. And yeah. uh, I probably made it a little too complicated that tournament. But, uh, I, I mean, making that team, I think, was probably the, the thing I'm most proud of in my career because team, just making Team Canada, making the, making the you know, that, that big team, it, it, they, they could take three, three different sets of, like, players on those teams. Yeah. Oh, my God. There's so much talent in Canada. And I just felt really blessed to be on that and really grateful. Yeah. I was actually about to say what you just said. There's so many players you can pick from. Are you at all rattled that it feels like Team USA is kind of sniffing on the heels now? We're coming for you. USA, dude. no, they're good. I That's going to be a battle. They're, yeah. They've really – USA has always been like a real meat and potatoes kind of gritty, up and down type team. And, yeah. Um, maybe a little bit of, you know, a little bit of that football culture in, in, in hockey. And it's changed a lot. There's a lot of – these kids now, these American kids are so talented, and um, 
there's been tournaments where I've watched the USA play and they more, look more like Canada yeah. than we do at times. And it's and, wild. You know, it's USA hockey should be excited. I mean, yeah. Um, who knows? And the next time we get another best on best tournament, it's really disappointing that we've had two non Olympic years. I know. Yeah, it's and then just uh, awful. You know, I know we we're all hoping for it last year and didn't end up happening. And um, and then obviously the World Cup just got pushed back because of the whole you know Russia Ukraine thing and. So it's really disappointing not to have that. Like a guy like McDavid's never played for Canada. It's really sad. Isn't that you know, crazy? On a best yeah. on best, you know, yeah. he's played World Championships, but um, so yeah, I hope we get that back because yeah. obviously World Juniors is the best thing for that now. Yeah. So fun. I mean, we absolutely God. have to. It's. Yeah. I mean, that's like you said. We got the Hughes boys. We got Zegris. We got we got Boy and Fox. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. it is yeah. that that will be an unbelievable There's game. There's a if, lot of talent in the U.S. right now, yeah. and, and USA U.S. players look differently than they ever have right now. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah. So you're a big number nine guy. Got to talk about it. Yeah. And I have a question for you. Okay. For for the listeners, you you wore nine most of your career. Then you've worn iterations of it, 91, 19. You get to Ottawa. None are available. You combine a childhood number five yeah. with nine. You guys did your research, man. I can't believe how on top of you. You won't know as much about me as me. <laughs> uh, I mean, if, if that's if I got to bring something yeah, to the table oh, this here. Yeah, great. You guys, like. Yeah, so I'm impressed. you wear 95 now. Yeah, elite number. You're one of I think when you first threw that thing on, you were one of like six guys in the league yeah. to ever wear it. Yeah. But this is on. what I really want. Or it what, goes what? even d- like deep in your life. Like you were born like nine pounds nine ounces, right? Yep. Like you're like yeah. nine yep. pounds nine Good ounces. You have, like, born, dialed, when yeah. do you get off the ice at warmups? I know it's something too. Like yep. you get up to twenty nine oh nine, right? Yeah, from the bench. Yeah, yeah. yeah there you yeah. go. Yeah, yeah you warm, go. warm ups the same. And yeah. then I'm always last guy out. But uncle sit. was the one who wore five, right? Yep. So that's why okay, five's so incorporated. It's deep in your history. Yeah. Fine. yeah. So nine's up in your life here. Yeah. This is what I need to know, Matt. Okay. Your son Bo is born on the ninth. Yeah. Your daughter James is born on the ninth. Yeah. You guys have you guys fucked up. We dude. missed it. I know. <laughs> so, like, what's the plan here? Are we going for the 19th? Or are we going? Like, I mean, come on. I would love the 19th. Yeah. I, she's getting induced on the 27th. Okay. It's my grandma's birthday, so that'd be really cool. But yeah, I, 29th could work. We, I was I just was say like, push two days. Okay, so we got it. We had a scare the other day when I was in Tampa. I thought that we were gonna have to. Uh, she had some like tests done, and it looked like we we're gonna have to induce early potentially. She called me the morning of. She woke me up before the Tampa game, and that was on the 8th. And, dude. and she's like, and I'm like, hey, it's coming on the ninth. I was like, Dad, how about like, we might have might have, to have a kid tomorrow. And so yeah, we we missed the boat on it. I I was pretty disappointed. I'm such a numbers guy, dude. Yeah, if BD three if BD three had been born on December 9th, you would have had to have 12 kids and hit the ninth of every month. And I'm sorry, but that I'm was going to have might, to happen. I might have them use the same scissors uh, yeah. on the umbilical yeah. cord yeah. on me right yeah, after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I Seriously. think this is it for us. Yeah, it might so. be a snip situation yeah. after yes, this one. Yes. I think so. I think we're done. <laughs> if you had hit. This third kid on the ninth, I, I I wouldn't have believed in anything else other than the number nine. Yeah, yeah it's like, it would be crazy. I mean, right? truly, that would, would be absurd. Unbe- it would be nuts. That took a lot of planning. So. I mean, it's like you're clearly such a numbers guy. When Bo was born, you obviously thought of that immediately, right? You were like, holy shit, it's the I, ninth. I, I, yeah, like, yeah, and his birthday is 1919, too. So there's the 19 Damn. in there. And, like, and my Good daughter's 11920. Yep. Um, yeah, it's wild. Um, Look at that, 20 minus 11, nine. Whoa. Whoa, wow, whoa. I didn't even think of that. Let's go. That's pretty funny. This is yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, it's crazy. So hopefully there's, I guess, 27, 2 and 7 add up to 9. So if we're inducing on the 2, 7 is good, yeah. and I'm telling you, we like, you never know. I'm hoping well, for 19. I'm yeah. hoping for the 19th. Yeah. 19 could work. That would be awesome. So, yeah, yeah it's, 9's followed me my whole life. And so, yeah, anything. When I went to Ottawa, I was almost wore 21 because of Forsberg, and I was like, I can't not wear something with 9 in it. Yeah, so that I, would break it up too much. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. I, 95 turned out good. I, I, Pretty cool. I, I, I think it suits me, and uh, it's kind of my own thing, so it's it's fun. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, okay, dude, so we buried the lead here, but on Friday, last Friday, December 2nd. Oh, yeah, this is kind of fucked up of you, honestly. Right. 300th tuck. Quick fist bump for that. Thanks, man. Yeah. Pretty sick. Great stuff. You just couldn't have waited Here's for us? Here's the thing. You knew we were coming today. <laughs> You couldn't have just held out a little bit. A lot man, of people. A lot of people are saying. A lot of people man. are saying it was rude. They're already. They're already. They're so hard to come by this year for for most of our team. Like, geez, I'll take anyone that yeah, can right now, especially well, the goalie pulled. That's I was a gonna say. If you a lot it. of people are also saying that you did it as an empty netter in to honor us, which was cool. Like a, they, okay. they, you, did you got it as the an empty netter. Net, you got your three hundred go. was an empty netter so for I the empty netter. That was pretty sick. That's beautiful stuff. Well, we'll go with that. Okay, so dude, check this out. I actually haven't even told this to Dan yet. All right, so you have scored three hundred goals. It's an incredible feat. It became the 200, 215th person to ever walk this earth to score 300 goals in the NHL. 
Wow, I would have thought sick. it would be more than that. That's pretty cool. Only 250 people have ever done that it. That is pretty cool. Okay? I actually am in the dark here, so I'm kind of okay, nervous about so what's coming here. 215 people who have ever lived have scored 300 NHL goals. Do you think more or less people have, and I'm going to give you some other things, okay? Oh, okay. Do you think more or less people have swam across the English Channel from England to France, which is 20 miles, and I know you're a bad swimmer, dude. I so am a, Do I you sink. think more or less people <laughs> have swam across the English Channel or scored 300 NHL goals? That's got to be way less. 20 mile swim? 20.5 mile swim. Um, For some reason, I think it's more because you're yeah, maybe a, building me up that there was more people to swim. A lot of logic to this guy. A lot of logic to Dutchie over here. That. Like, also, I, I can't swim. That's a, a thing, mile. right? Yeah. It's like, I feel like anyone, I mean, you're yeah, not going like to like succeed, right? but yeah. people are going to try. So, yeah, yeah. maybe more. And was it 250 or 215? 215. 215. 215. Like 250 people is not a lot, right? Oh, it's so, tiny, dude. You, there, you've done an incredible and, thing. And, there's probably a thousand people a year that try. And but so. the other thing is, there is a lot more people that swim on this earth that play hockey. So yeah, true. Yeah, I have a bit oh, of okay. Of I'm, I'm with Matt. Back to over. There. I'm back with to Matt. Over. We're going more. I'm selling okay. myself short. Maybe you guys, no, you guys are correct. More. It's actually 1,831 have made it across the English yeah. Channel. Okay. That's impressive. Ready? 215 people have scored 300 NHL goals. Have more or less people been to space? <laughs> less. <laughs> less. More. Really? We just hit our 600th person to space last year. 600 people have been to space. About these you've scored. Anymore, right? You've scored 300. You've scored people are just like goals. up in space, and we don't know. You've about done it. something like significantly more rare than going to space. That's, that's cool, man. That's, that's gotta feel good, man. I'm, I'm gonna feel pretty good walking out of here, actually. You I mean, have, you guys have really built me up. Today. Okay, ready? <laughs> more or less people have summited K2, which is way harder than summiting that's Everest, That's got to be less. Because I know Everest is like 6,000. I know people. that Everest I is like I want to say less, but you're making it so. Like it's more, like 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 there's more people because you're. If this you're is really more, nice right I now. think Matt's right. If this is more, this is looks bad on you. K two, what's K two? K two, second tallest mountain on the earth, but the hardest summit on earth. Okay, so more, more, three hundred and seventy-seven. Well, it's that's the close though. It's the equivalent of scoring two hundred and thirty-six NHL goals, which is nothing to our boy Dutchie, <laughs> who popped three hundred, dude. Not a big deal. Okay. Okay, last one. You scored three hundred NHL goals. Only two hundred and fifteen people have ever done that. Have more or less people won the Nobel Peace Prize? More because it's been around longer, right? Damn. Or is it less? The Nobel Peace Oh, Peace Prize. Yeah. Less. 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 103. Less. It's the okay. equivalent of scoring 404 so goals. That cool. No. And by the way, you're, you're, not like a big deal. Scoring 404 goals. Oh, sorry, 404 goals is the exact amount of goals Johnny Tavares has. And so he's got he's got the Nobel Peace Prize, according to me. Oh, wow. Something to aspire Johnny, to. Johnny yeah. said he's a But great dude, you're the scorer. second one from your class, by the way, yeah. to ever hit the 300 mark, no, which is pretty it's sick. Good. I got a little ways to catch up to Johnny, but well, here's here's what would you rather for you. More points your rookie year. Here's what would you rather for you. Would you rather score 100 more goals in your career, hit 400, or keep your 300 and win a Grammy for a country song that you wrote? <laughs> <laughs> keep the 300. Yeah, you still have your 300 no, talks. No, I, I would, if it's 400, 400 for me is kind of, I think 500 is the number you want to yeah. get. Yeah, hell yeah, yeah. I, I, I was going to say, like, you're going to hit 400. Uh, 500 is hard. 500, no, no, four, oh, 400. 400. Yeah, you got 400. Sure. You're going to hit 400. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 500 is really tough. 1,000 points is easier than 500 goals. Yes, correct. 1,000 points is a huge deal, but Grammy, a Grammy, dude? Like, dude. <laughs> I think a Grammy over for an, 400 uh, For goals. an original yeah. song, yeah. that's yeah. pretty good. Pretty sick. I mean, also, you're going to, you just hit 700 games. So uh, 900. 900 games. That's no, what no, he's going to yeah. get there. 700. It's what, next year? You yeah. get 1,000? Yeah, if I stay healthy. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. Oh, come year. on. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. like yeah. that's going to be a fun little moment. Get, yeah, a, get, a, get a gift from the, I, from I don't the boys. I'm old enough to have been doing that, but yeah, it's crazy. I, I, I pinch myself sometimes how many. Uh, how many games I've been lucky enough to play? Dude, well, Very listen. That. I just want you to know when you go home tonight, I want you to remember that, tr like almost triple the amount of people have been to space yeah, and you're, have done something you've done on an NHL. More sheet. rare than people who you're. I, I you're better than an astronaut. I, I appreciate it. You know what? After the loss tonight, you know, it's yeah. a tough game. Not a lot going on offensively for us. You know, I need a little pick. This is pretty. That's our, our headline. Yeah. Matt Chain yeah. is better than an astronaut. Yeah. That's Matt good. Jane has, has been to space, yeah, basically. Yeah, pretty much. Um, That's beautiful okay. stuff. So, dude, if you're down, we were going to play a little game. Okay. Oh, yeah. This, this is stuff this we want to yeah. we want to put you to the test and make you make some hard decisions here. Okay. This game we're calling – it's a little new segment. New segment on yeah. the Empty Netters podcast. It's, a, it's an inaugural segment yeah. with Matt Duchesne. Yeah, it's we're calling stuff. Pass, Shoot, Score. Okay. Okay? We're going to give you three things. You have to call one of them pass, one of them shoot, one of them score. And the okay. way it works, it's not like you hate any of them. It's just pass. Kind of like a ranking. Pa it's a ranking. Pass, is, assists are cool, dude, but someone else is doing the work. So that's pass. Okay, so that's third. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Shoot, 
Pucks on net is a good thing, yeah, but yeah. it's just an okay thing. That's yeah. second. Yeah. Score, light in the lamp. That's the electric okay. factory. Right. That's what people show up Nothing for. Bad. So we're going to give you three things, and okay. you're just going to hit us with a pass, shoot, score on okay. each one. Perfect. Love it. Okay. Dan, you want to take us away? Yes, I do. Pass, shoot, score. Nashville. Denver. Halliburton. Oh. And dude, keep I, in this mind, is bro, not going to be easy for you. Wife I want, I want from to... Denver, dude. No. I know. You can't, you can't see where her. You live here. Well, she likes Nashville better than Denver now. Okay, okay, um, so that might she's be. She's a... from s south of Denver too. Like she's okay. from Parker, so I got past with Denver. Um, we love Denver, a lot of history, but two places are home. That's Halliburton and Nashville. You're a big hometown guy, and oh, I really God. like that. Um, you know what? Actually, Dutchie, I was going to say I. One thing I love how we love our hometown. I love how much you yeah. love your hometown. And I was gonna be like, dude, you were like easily the proudest Halliburton dude I've ever met. But then I was like, that's bullshit. You're the only Halliburton dude yes, I've ever met, so yes. I don't want to say that. But there's not many of us out there. But <laughs> dude, I do think it's cool how hard you go for it and how it's shaped a ton of your life. So no, I think that's we, an we awesome love, thing. I mean, we're we have a special. We're a special. It's a special town. It's yeah. so small. It's got such unique culture. Did your uncle play in the league? Uh, no, he got drafted in the sixth round by. Uh, by Vancouver. That's Never right. Yeah. Another uncle dropped by the Islanders too. So are you the only Halliburton NHLer? No. Um, Cody Hodson. Cody's from Halliburton from too. Halliburton. Sick. I didn't know originally, that. Originally, like he played, he and I played tight. I was going to say, you guys been together say. for a minute. Yeah. Played with like Stamkos and Delzato and those guys. Uh, and Did Markov. he play on the Huskies? Yep. So we Get both played on the Huskies before they changed it to Highland Storm. Um, Minden, there was Minden Monarchs and Halliburton Huskies. Those were the two towns two teams and then they amalgamated and now the Highland Storm and now the new junior team in town uh, they renamed the Huskies Halliburton County Huskies so yeah. it's pretty great but there you go yeah so she would be Nashville as much as I absolutely love Nashville there's only one hometown for me and that's Halliburton wow so scores I love, I love it he's I didn't be here forever dude he's gonna I stay here forever but it. it's yeah. still we, we all, we're, we're Halliburton forever here forever it's Halliburton's where we go every summer our cottage is a uh, our, our property there um that's a holy place for us so all right yeah, does, does ashley love it up there loves or is she just tolerate she it for no, you she loves it okay <laughs> she asked me one time she said would you have been would you have married me if i didn't like halliburton and i said probably not probably yeah, not 100 yeah. no yeah. that's 100%. a massive red flag it, i don't think oh i don't think we could have done it yeah like, that's as much of a red flag as you could ever so expect simple and easy up there it's yeah. just it's great being on the lake is just incredible and do you oh, train well. when you go up there or do you yeah, kind of yeah. just no i have a gym and we've got a hill um, I put in like artificial turf hill, my, yeah, my own gym, my property. Um, there's not much up there, so you got to kind of bring it to yourself. So, yeah. you know, build it. Is it which sheet I, do you skate I will on? Come. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice. So, then, so which sheet do you skate on up there's there? The one you used, town. Is it the one you used to play at? Yeah, uh, that's growing up, yeah, I played high school hockey there. That's epic, and, yeah, yeah. It's good. So that's pretty sweet. I only played in Halliburton for three years, and then I started playing in Lindsay for the AAA team there. Yeah, which is a so, decent a, drive, a eh? Very long drive. Yeah, uh, my good dad, parents, yeah. God bless my dad and my mom and my sister, too, for how many car ride she had to be part oh my of so God. yeah she, pr she probably god bless her the most actually on that because she had no interest ever yeah. going and uh she supported me a lot so um always happy to give back to her when i can for yep. sure there you go uh, real quick for the next one as a lake guy right because like halliburton there's a yeah. lake per person you know i think it's literally more yeah i think it's there's more lakes than people yeah. in halliburton you can't swim, dude. Like, what did you do? What did you do I on mean, the lake? I mean, I can swim. I just <laughs> hate it, and um, I like snorkeling. I, I just sink, so I got to grind yeah. a little bit harder for it. Yeah. yeah. Um. I mean, I'm big fisherman. I love wake surfing. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Now uh, we're talking. Yeah, surfing's great. I I bought a surfboat a few years ago, and um, just got another another one. Trade that other old one in, and we love it. I mean, we're gonna, we'll do more of it as time comes, yeah. but. Um, I also love drinking some Hecho on the dock. Man. Yeah. Oh, my go. God. Always, Hell yeah, uh, you do. Cheers, boys. Always, yeah, yeah, cheers, cheers to yeah, the Hecho on, on the dock. Cheers, I love it. Cheers, buddy. Beautiful. We grew up on the beach, and, you know, like, we were always ocean guys, but then yeah. our parents got a lake house at this lake in New Hampshire, and I got to tell you, dude, once you get the boat out there, and yeah. you're just, like, doing all the activities, and you're just, like, drinking right on the dock, jumping, I was like, oh, actually, lake life is Lake life is better. awesome, but nothing beats the lake it's no, incredible it's lake life's it's incredible lake sure. life is and again as a coastal boy yeah, it's hard yeah. to admit it lake life is the yeah, best it's incredible no, there's no showers on the lake you just yeah, wake yeah. up jump right Damn in right, start absolutely. your day it's yeah. unreal um okay you ready for the yeah, next hit him with the sure. next pass shoot score um these are songs okay songs yep okay. mr misunderstood by eric church yep whiskey glasses yep. by morgan wallen macy's day parade by green day <laughs> oh man you guys really did your homework um <laughs> So, yeah, Macy's Day Parade was my first song I ever learned on guitar. I'm going to 
past that one. Really? Uh, wow. Yep. yep. Just because you've, uh, you've, I mean, you've literally moved past it. I, I mean, it like means that. something to me, but it's not one of my favorite songs. Well, dude, because song, for some context, we love playing music too. We're both yeah. guitar players. Oh, really? He was a drummer for a bit, but we both nice. play guitar now. Yeah. yeah. It was like started drummer, piano player, and then we were like, actually, chicks like guitar players. We should just play guitar. Yeah. Yeah. But so now was, I've transitioned to piano now. Yeah. Nice. Just, so we started doing well, once that. Once you learn, you guys know, once you learn one instrument, you can learn. Yeah, it's tons, awesome. Right? Yeah. I, yeah. I never get time to play now. My daughter always comes up, even when I pull it out halfway through a song and starts doing this on the strings. Yeah. I You're don't like, get well. <laughs> nearly enough time. It's my favorite thing I never get to do. But, I actually uh, kind of I feel you on that, yeah. but I thought because there's there's the songs that I learned first yeah. that really resonate. So yeah. I, I was surprised the quick For pass sure. on Macy's. No, it, it would have to be. I haven't played that song in probably 15 years either, so maybe more. Um, uh, shoot would be uh, Whiskey Glasses and Score would be Mr. Misunderstood. Okay. Do you think that's your favorite song ever? Yeah, I love that song. I think just the lyrics are amazing and um, you know, there's, there's definitely, that one is, uh, not so much the Mr. Misunderstood part, but there's so many like little parts of it that I can relate to like stuff I've been through. Yeah. So yeah. it's just like, uh, it's been a, like kind of my favorite, my favorite song in terms of just everything. It's a great song. Eric Church is my, my favorite. I was going to ask, do you have a favorite country yeah, artist that you don't I, know? I, I think, it always honest, changes honestly, maybe. Honestly, he was my favorite for a long time and I'd still, he's definitely like an A, B or C, like, like yeah, a one yeah. A, one B, one C. I, I'm all over the map with who my favorite is. It just depends what I'm listening to. So Yeah, for sure. Um, that makes sense. I used to have it in my mind, like, hey, this is my favorite. This is my second favorite. Now I'm just like, well, this is what I listen to. And yeah. I, I, yeah. you know, um, like Wallen and Hardy are two of my favorites. And they're, I, I love that. Well, that Hardy's almost single-handedly bring rock and roll back. Yeah, no I doubt. I that for a while. He's actually playing with Nickelback uh, at Boots and Hearts this summer in, uh, in uh, up in Ontario. Uh, and that, I've... I've I saw that and I'm like, oh my god, I gotta be. I was gonna that. say you so, gotta be there, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Nickelback takes a lot of flack, but ca Canadians love Nickelback, and I still love Nickelback. <laughs> Nickelback slaps. I don't. I, it's absolutely. one of those things. I don't get it. And it's one of those internet trends that people are just like, yeah, it's fun yeah, to hate I feel on like Nickelback. People and, are coming back around to it now. Like, yeah. Like we listen to Nickelback all the time in the room. Guys I actually, really? Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. I, I do that experiment all the time. People like to shit on Nickelback, and then I put it on at a bar. Yeah. Everyone's singing. Everyone Nickelback. loves it. Everyone yeah. loves it. Yeah. They they think it's ironic, but I'm like, no, you actually just like it. I I thought the biggest breaking news of this podcast was gonna be you accidentally telling us the gender of your unborn baby but in fact it's that the national predators love nickelback yeah. oh, yeah. <laughs> this, this is what's going to bring nickelback back <laughs> yeah. to mainstream no, we, we, uh, fame we it's great all the time we uh i've always loved nickelback since i was a kid i mean they when i was you know 10 years old they were the band yeah and i i grew, I grew up on rock and country my dad brought me up with like old 90s country and then like ACDC and Def Leppard, that was like it, yeah. right? Yep. Brian Adams. I mean, you know some of those '80s bands, and I, I, I go on a Def Leppard kick every six months. Where you know my Friday lifts this year were like my heavy leg day, and I just I throw on uh, Def Leppard. My cousin who puts me through my other trainer stuff at home um, loves it too. So yeah. we just be you know jamming out, just rock it sure. out. Yeah. I mean, we're the same age. Max I remember Watts. that too. Growing up, yeah. people bumped Nickelback, and yeah, I yeah. like went. Oh, yeah. And these recent years, when people started shitting on it, I was like, I kind of. <laughs> I know. Enjoy I kind of don't want to be like, hey, I love them. Yeah. Uh, now I don't care. I'm, yeah. You know, yeah. To the point I mean, where it's on. like, yeah, I like what I like. <laughs> All right. Wait, uh, before you're doing the next one. Yeah. Well, Dan had a joke joke to me earlier because I just wanted to bring this up. He was like, dude, Dutchie is the most. Oh, yeah. yeah I need <laughs> to actually. Th thank you for bringing <laughs> yeah. that up. You are the most American French Canadian who's ever lived. <laughs> like you are. And I say that. I'm not a true French Canadian. I, I call You know how like people like say that French are like. Like they'll call them frogs or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I always say I'm a tadpole. I'm yeah, like yeah. Okay, I like that. Um, I like that too. My dad lost all his French when he was young, so I don't speak French. But like, I love the French. I love French culture. I love the my heritage. Maurice Richard was the reason yeah. I wore number nine. I just resonate a lot with that. Sure. Um, so yeah, but I've yeah. But you're like you're a country music guy. Yeah. But country's you're, bigger in Canada than it is in the U.S. That's actually I've heard that. Fair, so a lot of my south, what about the animal it's huge though? in the south, but like if you go to New York, country music isn't as big as in Ontario. Yeah, that's fair actually. Like, like Wallen, Morgan Wallen's doing his new tour, and he's playing two nights in Toronto. Yeah, that's right. Funny. He doesn't play two nights in. Yeah, he wouldn't do that in, uh, in MSG or Orlando, Florida. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so it's the south, and the, I always tell people the south. People can't believe I like country that I meet down here. I'm like Canada's the south. Yeah. It's just we yeah. rock it. Yeah, <laughs> but I do also know that you once say you identify as a bald eagle if you had to pick a spirit animal, and that's about as American <laughs> as you it cannot. You cannot so, be Canadian and say I your was, spirit animal is a bald I was eagle. Obsessed with bald eagles as a kid. <laughs> I don't know why. I just love them so. Yeah. And I was like, 
you know, eight or nine years old. So, yeah. I mean, they're yeah, pretty I, sick. I still think they're the sickest animal going. Oh, yeah. yeah. We see them a lot in, in uh, back home. So, we probably have as many as I was going to say, I bet you have more, dude. That's kind of one that yeah. we, like, we, like, snipe the yeah, bald we eagle, but it. it's like, yeah. oh, well. You know what else we lie about, dude? If you see... If you ever see on American TV a bald eagle and they make like that screech sound, that's a hawk, dude. Like oh, the bald eagle yeah. makes yeah. a weird ass yeah, noise. They do like eagle, some hawk noise to make it sound, sound cooler. Cool yeah, exactly. Yeah, I agree with you. That's yeah. a complete yeah. lie. All right, we're going to take it to the kitchen. Pashut score sushi, pasta, Cadbury milk chocolate. Sushi, pasta. I think pasta is, is score. Oh, I wow. Love, right away. Holy pasta. shit. What's your favorite I, I pasta? I never eat it, but. Like, you never eat it. it. You have it before the games like all the time. Gluten free. Stuff. It's not like the good stuff. Yeah. But the good yeah. stuff's like a nice cheat meal. Do you um, treat yourself to the good I don't, stuff? I don't really do cheat meals too often. That's my pregame meal. I get to eat gluten free pasta, and like that's kind of like a cheat meal. So yeah, I, I like the gluten free stuff. But Which what are we talking? Uh, um, red sauce, Alfredo. Uh, like what do you like? Pink sauce, like the yeah. I got a little like a rosé sauce. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, it's got to okay. be the best pasta dish going. Is you go, you go to Europe, you get the spaghetti carbonara. Oh yeah, that's insane. Yeah, I mean that's that's like, and then. I actually think sushi would be my shoot and pass would be Cadbury chocolate. I, uh-huh. I love desserts, but like just a piece of chocolate, I don't think I would take over like a nice, a really good sushi meal or pasta. I what's, like I what's, uh, I kind of like how your favorite meal you just never eat. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I don't, I don't have it's it. It's just I like no it. cheat meals, <sighs> never yeah, have it. <laughs> I, whenever I do, I feel so damn guilty. Yeah. Like, it's not it's worth the anxiety attack. It is. playing a game the next day to be able to yeah. justify it. Yeah. Which you, you actually do 82 times a year. Yeah. So I feel like you could yeah. sneak a few pasta yeah, dishes in there. <laughs> I try and, I'm, I've been really trying to keep it light this year. Yeah. So, been eating a lot of fish and, so, and protein. So, uh, favorite sushi? I love like a, like a, like a, um, like uh, tuna with like some temp- tempura shrimp on the inside, like some of that spicy mayo. Yeah. Some all the bad stuff in sushi that or that's yeah. that's I where it hits. Absolutely hits. love uh, salmon sashimi, which is super plain. Oh, yeah. oh no, it's bomb salmon. though. I love it. I like it yeah. better than Toro actually. Dude, me I too. Like Toro, I feel like I get dragged for liking salmon. Every time we go out to sushi, I'm the guy that's ordering all the salmon. Yeah, Everyone's like, salmon, dude, get out of here. Salmon like nigiri or salmon sashimi is like where. Yeah. It's I was gonna say salmon nigiri is where I live. Yeah. That's wow. that's. I don't like the that's wasabi. That's like and. At all? I like it. No, I don't like wasabi. Wow. I like just straight. I don't put soy sauce on anything either. Oh damn! Wait, you're dude, just. I, just well, you, I mean, you're a sushi chef's dream then, because yeah. when they come out, yeah, they're yeah, like, no soy, no, I no like wasabi. Soy. I like when they make the sauces and they put a little bit on. Yeah, yeah. a little nice. bit of the creamy yeah. stuff. Like it's good. Like so good. Dude, well, I, I, I only got it. I was that guy that only got into sushi because it was a vessel for soy sauce and wasabi into my body. Yeah. Like I was like, I would like to just drink yeah. soy sauce and wasabi, but like if I put sushi on it, it's socially acceptable. There you go. And eventually, I, I morphed into there more you go. comfortable shit. Yeah, people love soy sauce. Yeah. I never got into it. It's too salty. I'm it is. It is extremely yeah, I'm salty. A big, yeah. I'm a low sodium soy yeah, sauce guy. I, I, I don't put salt on anything. I don't like a lot of salt. I don't need a it's lot good. of salt. Yeah, it's I, better for you. You are a dessert guy, though. What is, what's the dessert if it's not not, Ooh, not Cadbury's? It's really hard to beat like a chocolate brownie, like a good one with like a la mode ice cream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So that's, that is just so hard to beat, but tiramisu is like. Really? I love tiramisu. Dude, yeah. you got to be going out to more Italian dinners. You get yourself some pasta. You get some stuff at your Matt, you've earned it. Yeah. You, I'm, 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 I'm going to tell you. Order, like, there's a chain restaurant called North, and she'll order uh, tiramisu in from there. And when she's been pregnant, as there's the stuff coming through my door. I'm just like, oh, God. Yeah. Like, babe, like, I get mad at her sometimes. Like, you know, like, don't order me. Like, I yet. can't have this. Or <laughs> hide it and eat it when I'm not here. Like, stop. Because, yeah. I, like, I can say no to pasta as much as I love it. I can say no to bread. All that stuff. If I see dessert, it's over. It's over. It's yeah. over. I got to yeah. have a bite. At least a bite. So oh, you're, yeah. you're I mean, more can't savory sit than sweet then with the desserts. No, I'm, I'd be more sweet probably with desserts. Yeah. But like, are you like more like a chocolatey? Yeah. You I'm lean a, that I'm side more than like guy. sour, gummy, like no, any of that I, stuff. Yeah, yeah. You put fruit in the dessert, I'll yeah, just pass. N- knock it off. Like, like what? Yeah. Same. Yeah, no, I actually completely I com- agree. Could not yeah. agree with <laughs> that. I don't more. like apple pie, which is people think it's not. Okay, that's actually a good feather in your cap for not being a very American. Yeah, there you go. I don't like key lime pie. I don't like. Like strawberry, anything. Like yeah. You put strawberry sauce on anything. I'm like, Pass. get this out of my face. I completely yep. agree. This is brutal. Completely agree. So. All right, let's hit him with okay. the last two. All right, next one. This is a grab bag one. Okay. okay. Pass shoot score. The Green Bay Packers. Okay. Forrest Gump. Yeah. Gibson guitars. Ooh. Ooh. This we got him. I, we got him. I didn't expect this to to, got to stump him so much. Pass would be. They're all pretty equal for me. Like I'm a. I've never, I haven't always been a Packers fan. I kind of just got onto that. 
I don't know where it came from. Yeah, I was going to say, how did that happen, by the way? I love Aaron Rodgers. I just, it, it, no. Was it a Rodgers thing? Are we going back thing. like Favre days? I, I kind of like, like, I don't know. I used to watch fo- football with my dad. I wasn't super into it. I'm a huge football guy now. But I for some reason, the Packers always like, I don't know, his jerseys or the tradition. I love their tradition. Six That's, jerseys, they're yeah. They're like, I was also a Montreal Canadiens guy growing up, right? Like, just their tradition. Yeah. yeah. Packers are like the equivalent of that. I just love Definitely. that. Definitely. Like Lambo. You know I mean? Colt, it's, yes. Lambo, the Colt. Yep. it's incredible. It's just like their jerseys. Everyone like, owns the team. The whole world just, owns yeah. the team. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Their jerseys are beautiful. It's just, there's they got a lot going on. And then Rodgers is just, he's poetry. Oh, my God. He truly is. Uh, he's got a cannon, too. Yeah. It's unbelievable. So, I think Gibson guitars would be score for me. And then, I'll say Forrest Gump's up is pass as much as i absolutely love forrest gump wow i cry every time oh my god how could you not i'm not a crier at oh all. really i'm, I'm a big movie crier yeah, i'm a very emotional person but i'm not a crier okay okay which is weird but but forrest gump gets you forrest gump oh when he's talking to her grave and i was gonna gump, say is it yeah exactly get, i'm done i'm, I'm done, done. It's I'm when done. it's when he meets little forrest for the first time it oh. crushes me oh yeah. really I'm to- oh every yeah. time yeah when he asks, asks jenny yes, he's like is, is he like me yeah i i'm toast when he goes every time he goes He's talking to their, her grave, and he's like, "She's so smart, Jenna." You know? Yeah, like, and he goes, oh, you, "You'd be so proud of yeah. him." And the score, I that just, score, I, dude, oh the music. So, actually, coming back from Sochi, yeah. we're in the plane, we're in the connector, so we took a pre- uh, like a charter from Sochi to Newark, and then Newark to, to Denver. Yeah, and we watched that and on I'm, the plane. I'm in business class, bawling. Dude, my it's wife the altitude. Like, it's the altitude. Like, I'm talking <laughs> You've like, got a gold medal in hand I'm, at altitude. I'm, 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 Matt's wife is tears with the like band I'm, from his gold medal. I'm legit sobbing. <laughs> and my wife's like, what is wrong with you? And I'm like, and she's laughing at See, me. I'm like, she's, she's I can't help it. You're like, I'm sorry. Now, this is an incredible now with film. with kids, like, I haven't watched it. So I don't think I've watched it more than maybe once since I've had kids and, like, maybe a piece of it. Yeah, it's just. I was gonna say movie. you'll probably cry harder. Now. Is it probably? And are you are you a Hanks guy? Yeah. Yeah. Well, who isn't? Who isn't? Yeah. Good he's, answer. Who isn't? He's yeah. unbelievable. Even that uh, Christmas movie that my son's obsessed with, the uh, Polar Express. Polar Express. Express. We. I mean, we have to. I, I hear, say I hear books. Tom Hanks' voice every single day because it's either on TV or the soundtrack's playing. So yeah, right. Yeah. Like there you go. I don't That's get funny. sick of it. Cause That's Tom really Hanks funny. Is a man. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Here's your last one. This is a bad one. Kay. Like. These are all going to be not great for you. Oh, but, but hold on. But to be clear, they're all bad things. So score here in this version is the thing that would bother you the least. Okay. Yeah, it's the same that ranking. Sense, yeah. But they're yeah. all top. Pass would be like can't take it. Yeah. Score yeah. would be like can kind of tolerate. Okay. Pass shoot score. Never catch a fish again for the rest of your life. Okay. But you have to keep fishing. Like yeah, you're like fishing. You, oh, you fish man. as much. You have to keep fishing. Yeah, it's not that. That doesn't you mean literally you don't hear, get. Hear the other you literally yeah, get skunked. Score. You no, literally no, get no. skunked every, skunked every skunked time you go out. Every time I yes. do a line. Yeah. Like you fish as often as you currently do. You just never right. catch one again right. for the rest of your life. Right. Next one is go on Dancing with the Stars. Okay. With no practice, by the way. Like you, you're not a good dancer. No, I know that. No, I'm not. And you now have to go on the national stage. So my kid is. My son is an unbelievable dancer. And I don't know how he got it, but well, anyway. My wife's don't very change. average, yeah. too. She's not, she gives it to me. I'm like, babe, you're not anything great. Shut up, Bo. Yeah, right. Shut you're up, beautiful, Bo. but you're not yeah. like the best dancer. All right, and then the last one is, for the rest of your life, every pair of sunglasses you put on has smudges all over it. <laughs> oh, man. Um, fishing, for sure, score. Um, like, you, you could not live with that. No. Getting skunked is one of the worst. We're big fishermen, too. Yeah. We fish off the, the, the rocks you, and Maine all the time. They beat you. That yeah, it correct. is awful. They well, wait, what, I'm actually curious. What kind of fishing do you do the most? Uh, walleye and trout, lake trout. Okay, yeah, yeah. Most. Yeah, we handline for the lake trout. Oh, no oh shit. wow. Nice. Like, yeah, I've never done school. that. That's like, cool. Uh, copper wire wrapped around like a wooden board. We let yeah. it out and it sinks really well. Yeah, yeah. That's why we use it. And then you, you do this by hand and the, the spoon like. Just keeps it moving. Yeah, yeah. and you yeah. drag the bottom a little bit, stirs them up, boom. So okay. It's that's fun. sick. Um, we, right, do so that's lot, we do cool. a lot of surf cat, like for bass, yeah. right, in the Northeast. And it's, yeah. I, when I was, when we were young, people would take us just like, you know, throw the bobber out and you're just sitting there. And yeah. I was a kid and I was like, this is so boring. I mean, trolling, trolling is the yeah. best thing, right? Like, yeah. absolutely. We troll for pretty much everything, so. Yeah, so doing um, that surf cat stuff yeah. was a blast. Yeah. Um, Dancing with the Stars would be, would be um, number, that wouldn't bother me. Okay, that's that's so the that least might of your be. Worries. Sorry, I think we flipped him. I think I you mean I think yeah. you mean score is dancing score, with the stars. Pass score, yes. is pass is fishing. Pass like you can't fishing. handle. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, score is dancing with the stars, and shoot would be sunglasses. No. Sunglasses. I can't even look at my wife's sunglasses when they're smudged, and they're always smudged. Matt, can't even same. Look at them. This just <laughs> despicable this degenerate. Happen. He wears glasses too. He has smudges all over his glasses and sunglasses, and I don't, I don't understand how he sees. It's insane. It's to just me. like it, it feels like I don't, I can see, so I'm like, whatever. It's just like so he, easy to wipe him off. Insane. It's just like yeah. clean him. I don't get it. 
What's wrong with you? I don't know, dude. I should. It's just like I do my shirt. It's right here. I have yeah. an easy rag. I just Feels don't ever insane. do it. I'm a fucking idiot. God. Yeah, I can't handle yeah. it. It's brutal. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm glad to know that fishing is this this tough. Me for you. too. That yeah. makes me happy. Yeah, All right, too. Matt. We have taken up over an hour of your time, and we can't thank you enough. This has been so unbelievable. Generous. Before you guys are, uh, before we sign off, do you have anything you want to plug? Anything you want to say? Anything you want to push? What's up? Just drink some hecho, man. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Some hecho. It's sick. Guys, it's, it's get on the hecho tequila uh, train. It's fun. Fun to be a part of. Uh, this and Friday beers and this awesome bar here in Nashville. Yeah, if you're uh, in the area, come check us out. Stop so, by the Almost Friday Sports yes. Club. It is in time and a yeah, half. It, I've never not, I'm, I have not been here nearly enough because I have two kids under four, another one on the way, and my wife can't drink, obviously, and wants no part of being in public right now. <laughs> but this, I'm dying to put in a shift here of college yep. and, and NFL football at some oh, yeah. point. Dude, you will. By the way, this is the spot during the day. Oh yeah, like, I think we're gonna do our Super Bowl party here this year. Oh my god, Super Bowl party. So oh yeah, it's a no brainer. This room will be yeah dialed. So going yeah. off, yeah. it's incredible. Well, yeah. now I know what I'm doing for the yeah, Super Bowl. Exactly, that was so. easy. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, well that's yeah, it. Seriously, for thank us. you so much, Matt. Uh, Matt, this yeah, has been an absolute blast. Dude. You guys are awesome. Thank, thank you. you. Awesome. All right, that was our interview with Matt Duchesne. God, he's the man. What a guy. It's just what like a stud. I, can't, I can't even begin to say how much fun. I can't get over that suit. I can't get over him leaking his the daughter. Or, oh my god! Yes, the, the gender, the, the of, gender his of his third baby. That Empty Netters podcast breaking. Yeah, news that was central. some breaking news. Unbelievable stuff. But thanks, huge stick taps to Dutchie. Such a blast. Can't wait to get back and do it again. All right, let's close out the episode as we always do with our segments that we love so so much. So let's start with uh, the uh, playoff trail. Oh, okay. Let's start with playoff trail. Dan loves the Buffalo Sabres. They, he declared them a wagon about three weeks into the season. I sure did. I sure did. And then pretty quickly, the Buffalo Sabres got dysentery. They lost a billion games in a row. Yeah. And it really reminded us of the Oregon Trail. So Dan and I do a little playoff trail game. And Dan, I'll tell you what. Um, we said they had to take care of the Columbus Blue Jackets, and they did. And your boy Tage had five goals. Five. I'll give Just you Just saying. Five. Tage said it in our season preview. Uh, Tage Thompson is one of the most underrated guys in the league. He is a top, top player, and if you can't see that, you have dysentery. So well, that's a break. Fair, but then we did say they needed to get through the back-to-back against Pitt, and they, and and they, they lost not. both. They, they lost, lost both. Ugh. They're still in seventh. They're 12-14-2. and two. Uh, The next five games are against the Kings, the Avs, the Yotes, Vegas, and the Lightning. You there gotta, are wins in there. you got to start winning these games. There are too. wins in there, and I'm telling you, we, I, we just, we're going to get back to 500. That's the goal. The getting, goal remains getting back to 500. Getting back to 500 is the next step. Uh, wheel this right into Eichel Watch, Chris, because this okay. is uh, some good news for me. Yeah. Uh, guys, Eichel Watch is, uh, as many of you know, at the beginning of the season, CP declared that Eichel would have 72 points. So it is a road to 72 points, which it looks like he is going to clearly get. And the real battle now, what we're really paying attention to now, is if he gets 90 points or over, I need to eat that many shrimp cocktail during a Vegas Golden Knights game. So what's the status update on Eichel? Dan, this is a sad one. The first sad one for me, I would say. Yeah, truly. He still has 29 points in 27 games, Mm -hmm. but that is no movement this week because he missed two games starting with that win in Boston when they broke the streak. He did play and had no points in their win against Philly on Friday, but then missed the Boston game again uh, yesterday, I think it was. Um, I don't think he re-injured it, his leg. It's an undisclosed lower body injury. I don't think he re-injured it, um, and I'm glad that he's still practicing and skating so it doesn't look long-term, but this is something that we can't have, especially on our road to 90. Um, so all of you Eichel fans out there, I encourage all of you to have one spoonful of shrimp cocktail tonight before you go to bed because I really think that'll help him get better. Look at that. So that's great. There's some action. So I am sitting pretty because uh, it's really the first time Jack has, hasn't been on a tear. Uh, speaking of people who are sitting pretty, where in the world is Austin Matthews? Uh, I declared that Austin Matthews might, we might be seeing the beginnings of him I don't know, maybe demanding a trade this Land summer. somewhere else. Maybe trying to do something nice for the Toronto Maple Leafs, but I will say he is sitting pretty. He's got 15 goals and 19 assists for 34 points in 29 games. They've won seven of their last eight. They're seven points up for the third-place Lightning. The Maple Leafs are on a tear. They are a certified wagon. Under they, the radar. They Under the figured, radar. They're going, uh, with teams like Boston and New Jersey, and we've got, you know, Vegas is still doing amazing. The Islanders are on a tear recently. Toronto is just somehow flying under the radar, and they are amazing. They're top three team in the league right now. Their big four are absolutely dominating. Austin Matthews is sitting in the locker room at Scotiabank right now. No question. Just had a that. nice shower. Yeah, he, he, he's, he's running the music. He, yeah. He's got his playlist going. Gosh. Took a great shower. He's probably doing a steam, getting a little massage. But he is... In your arena, Toronto fans, you 
look great right now. Austin Matthews at, at current standing ain't going anywhere. All right, Dan, let's give everyone stuff to watch this week. Yeah, games to watch this week, and then we will call it a day. I'm going to go a Thursday game. We've got the Maple Leafs and Rags. Ooh, I like that Love an original six matchup. Both teams, the Rangers, like we said, they're in our quack attack. They're pulling it together. Just talking about how great the Toronto Maple Leafs are doing. And then on Saturday, we love a Saturday game, Vegas Golden Knights, New York Islanders. Islanders are on a tear right now. Knights have been a top team all season. That is guaranteed to be a, a great matchup. Very cool. Thursday, uh, while you're listening tonight, I've got Kraken at Hurricanes. That's just a good game. Fantastic. And we might have some action on that one if Dr. Locks ever gets out of Instagram jail. So we'll stand, stand by. We'll Guys, see what happens. write your local congressman. Uh, pray for Dr. Locks. He's just he's he's sitting in jail right now. And then Monday, I'm giving you Sabres at Vegas. It's kind of like your team and my team. Yeah. I like that. I like that a lot. And then Tuesday, I've got Rags at Penguins. I feel like those teams just hate each other. Yeah, no like doubt. I just think they do. And then Ducks at Kings, little backyard brawl. Hey, I'm never mad that. about a backyard brawl. Gotta love a Southern California battle. All right, guys, that is us. That is it for us this week at the Empty Nose Podcast. Hope you enjoyed that Matt Duchesne interview as much as we did, like we said. And until then, we will see you guys next week. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Massive, massive thank you to Matt. It was incredible. Yeah. And actually, the uh, you know by the time probably the next episode comes out, Dutchie will uh, have a nice, beautiful little daughter there so uh tons of love to the duchene family and and welcoming your third child beautiful stuff maybe and also guys if you aren't already following along with the empty netters instagram page tiktok all that good stuff hop on get involved we got daily posts funny stuff just more of this stuff just more ways to interact with us and stay up on all the nhl happenings it's a good time and also if you haven't already go to apple spotify whatever it is smash that subscribe button listen like rate review Get in with us. We need it. We're chill guys. We're Dan cool. might have to eat 90 shrimp cocktail. Don't you're going to see that? You're going to want... I, producer Emily just laughing the fact that we're chill guys. That's, that's not a good look. So chill. There you go. There we go. <laughs> All right, guys. We will catch you next time on the Empty Nerds Podcast. <laughs>